Council. Michael Hagan looks set to join Parramatta in 2007 after Knights decided not to extend his contract beyond this season. He can ask for the decision to be brought forward from mid-season after he received the new offer. Confirm his availability for representative football this season. The champion halfback has only just resumed training after, after an off-season knee surgery and is taking it one step at a time. Andrew John still draws a crowd wherever he goes, but his days as a draw card for Tess and State of Origin may have already ended. Closer to the event, I'll have a think about it and see how I'm going, see how the body is, and probably see how the form is. But at this stage, I just want to get back on the field for the Knights, and then I'll decide that. Tess captain and long time Origin foe Darren Lockyer hoping John's plays on. I mean, he's a player that everyone comes to watch, and uh, you know, I think you know, he's you know, a player that. You know, is vital to the game and I guess if he hangs up the boots from representative football I'm sure there'll be uh, you know, um, people who, who will uh, be disappointed. John's claiming his career is now a year by year proposition. This year he's last under Michael Hagan, Knights management telling the coach he's unwanted for 2007. Hayes has always had my full support, he's done a lot for me as a player and as a person. He knows that um, I'd like to send him out a winner, that's, that's, that's what he'd like to do. Johns and Lockyer today launching the NRL's Community Carnival. Lockyer's impromptu coaching clinic going slightly astray. A <laughs> hundred players visiting 40 destinations. The NRL trusting off-field incidents from previous years will not be repeated. They're well aware that uh, the profile and the image of the game uh, need to be protected and um, I'm very hopeful that uh, we'll be going into this community carnival uh, with everyone conscious of that. Parramatta halfback Tim Smith has been cleared by police following an investigation into an incident outside a Rocks pub late last year. The matter has now been closed. Meanwhile Raiders CEO Simon Hawkins has the weekend to find some more money and prevent coach Matthew Elliott from joining Newcastle in 2007. The Knights and Panthers left for Alice Springs this morning ahead of their trial match this weekend. Senior Knights players are behind the push for Elliott to coach them next season but they were giving little away today. We don't like to be caught up in, in the off-field um, goings on in the club and we want to keep it that way. Craig Goward's management still having peace talks with the Penrith club. Another league news, Raiders coach Matthew Elliott has knocked back the Knights coaching offer. An outstanding game Danny Weidler, National Nine Just News. An Andrew Johns made a successful return from a serious knee injury in the Knights 22-4 victory over Cronulla. It seems to be no problem, it's all positive, come through with no knocks and uh, Looked after myself, didn't sort of get tackled too much. Harbour Andrew Johns made his comeback in the second half and helped set up two tries in just eight minutes. And his first hit out after surgery on his troubled knee. I'm just going to have to manage my knee and uh, ice it up and look after it. But uh, and this, this stage is pretty positive. And at the NRL launch last night, David Gallup took the opportunity to remind players to be on their best behaviour. While the game's other kingpin, Andrew Johns, was wrestling with his representative future. I, I'd, I'd really miss it, mate, but I look at, at Brad Fittler, what, what he done when he retired from rep footy. He galvanised the club. There's a wall of silence around rugby league's coaching merry-go-round this weekend that seems to say more than any number of denials. The Newcastle Knights are saying nothing about what appears to be the prospect of a complete coaching swap with the Parramatta Reels. A week before they play each other, the exchange for next year is halfway there. But Michael Hagan's departure for Parramatta is less an issue with Knights senior players than who turns up in his place. Joey Johns has a certain amount of input and had a minor spat with Brian Smith after a trial game four years ago. The fact no one would speak on the record today seems to indicate some sort of consultation is underway. At Parramatta, it was fan day. The Eels fell in with their blue and gold army for a day of fun and games, but Coach Smith was nowhere to be seen. That he'll be gone for good next year is all the players admitted knowing. If he signs there, good luck to him. You know, he's got a career to fulfil, so if he goes there, we'll wish him all the best. But at this stage, I think it's just rumours. Plus, we'll have Brian Smith off to the Knights.
this weekend's season opener at NRL between the Eels and the Knights. Now it's even more interest. Brian Smith today signed on as Newcastle's coach for 2007 in a straight swap with Michael Hagan. And a revelation from the outgoing Parramatta coach, he was going to quit at the end of the season anyway. Relief for Brian Smith today. One of the NRL's longest serving coaches now set to link up with the game's greatest player, Andrew Johns. The pair once thought to be feuding, now Smith can't wait to work with him. The idea of being at the Knights with uh, you know, possibly the, the world's best player, maybe the, the best player of all time as a captain and halfback is, you know, there ain't a coach alive who doesn't want to be in that, that uh, behind the desk at that club. Parramatta's successful pursuit of Michael Hagan causing plenty of fallout in Eels territory, but Smith's now revealed he was quitting anyway. To be honest, if it had been left to me, I would have resigned on the 31st of October next year when my contract was up. I'd made up my mind that 10 years was a fair time for me to be there and I was ready to move on. Smith, the third NRL coach to sign with a new club 12 months in advance. Ken with Sport next in a case of trading places at the Eels and the Knights. Mark, it is a little bit bizarre, but Brian Smith is off to Newcastle to replace Michael Hagan. It's now official. Parramatta coach Brian Smith will take over at Newcastle next season in what's become a direct swap between the coaches. Michael Hagan is leaving the Knights to join the Eels in 2007. Now Smith is heading north to take his place. As news of the exchange swept through the Newcastle squad today, Brian Smith fronted the media near his home in Wollongong, happy it was all in the open. To be going to the, to the Knights and to the Newcastle and the the Hunter region to be their coach is just, uh, you know, all of that is a dream. Only yesterday, Smith spoke of the attraction of helping a club become a force again. And while he denied a deal had already been done, there was no sidestep 24 hours later. To be honest, I asked them what took them so long. I've been sitting there waiting for their call. Importantly, it had the blessing of Andrew Johns and other senior players. And as Hagen has done with Parramatta, Smith has signed a three-year deal with Newcastle. We like it. Time for sport with Matthew White and Brian Smith. Off to the Knights. Yeah, Roscoe, that deal is done. He's confirmed Rugby League's hottest rumour, a direct swap with Newcastle coach Michael Hagen. Rugby League's coaching roundabout has come full circle for the Knights and Parramatta with Brian Smith confirmed as the man to replace Michael Hagen at Newcastle. Now, Smith has signed a three-year deal to head north, meaning he and Hagen will do a straight swap at the end of the season. Finally, something to cheer about for the Knights. Supposed to be. Chairman Mike Tyler's birthday, but it's Brian Smith with the present, given his dream job coaching Newcastle and Andrew Johns. The idea of being at the Knights with uh, you know, possibly the, the world's best player, maybe the, the best player of all time. There ain't a coach alive who doesn't want to be in that, that uh, behind the desk at that club. Smith will swap with Michael Hagan at season's end, but on Saturday night the sides clash in Newcastle. I think the most of them realise it's sort of somewhere between business and a circus. Hopefully we can have a win Saturday night and can celebrate with half a dozen blue tongues. Smith and Johns deny a feud a few seasons back will stop them working together. I wish I'd known uh, Andrew a bit better at the time and I wish I'd have contacted him and, and sort of nipped all that in the bud. And Brian Smith takes a shot at the Eels' chief executive. Outgoing Parramatta coach Brian Smith has taken a swipe at his boss, Dennis Fitzgerald, for the way his dismissal was handled. And he has warned the current coaching merry-go-round, started by his club, will bring teams unstuck. Since late last year when he was told his dumping from the club would be made public a year early, Brian Smith has wanted to express his disappointment. Today he did. It's not a wise thing to do, in my view, in terms of what, what my goal was, which was to have a, uh, a fully focused team with no interruptions and no distractions. And Smith has criticised the practice started by Fitzgerald of sacking and appointing coaches a season out. I think from a coaching perspective, it's a, a very dangerous precedent if it goes on in the future. You know, they could, they could land themselves in a whole heap of poo by doing it. Smith's early appointment at Newcastle could end up hurting the Eels. I've been told that two of Parramatta's best young players, Ben Smith and Dean Witters, could follow Smith to Newcastle. 
and that could be a start of a player swap between the clubs. How about you, Blakes? Matty? Well, Fat, I've been down to Melbourne a fair bit. I've, I've, uh, I'm the coach and staff for the Storm. I reckon oh, they're yeah. going to have a big season. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to that, but, you know, involved with the racehorse, been breeding a few ferrets, you know, just the usual sort of stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> just breeding them, are Oh, you get on the website, www.ferretbreeding.com. <laughs> best of the business, my life. And Sheafy? Mate, best thing I don't, I think uh, we followed the Tri-Series over there. The Australian boys at the end of the year took the family over. We had a great time. Also went to uh, Alice Springs a couple of weeks ago. And I want to say big hello to everyone in the Northern yeah. Territory because they absolutely love the show. They do. Hello to you. Well, they you leave up there too, don't they? Now... Other big news, of course, for you. You're on the board of the Newcastle Club and you've just signed uh, Brian Smith. I think it's a great buy for you, Blakes, for next year. Well, thanks, mate. Now, it took yep. us a while to get around to it and it's been a bit of, a, I suppose, a media well, circus. Well, about 48 coaches knocked it back first. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but at the end of the day, a good result. John Bailey, and Ray Ritchie. <laughs> you're saying Phil Economides before. Phil Economides. Leo Nosworthy. Absolutely. No, it's a, it's a good result. And <laughs> now, Chief, the thing I want to ask is, uh, I heard Brian Smith say on the radio, he said that, when he finally got the call from Ken Conway, he said, mate, you're two weeks too late. Where have you been? I mean, where were you? Look, that's been an obvious question. And, and people are saying that, you know, what's Brian's third or fourth priority? At the end of the day, we didn't go down that path because the thought of swapping coaches just didn't seem appropriate yeah. because it comes with luggage. But when it was all said and done, he was the right fit for the future Chet, for us and it worked out well. Is it, is, it a, uh, is it a coaching position with a thought for after Andrew Johns? Would it be fair in saying that? Oh, look, I think so. I think that's a fair call to say. But look, Brian's got a wonderful record, and every club he's been to, he's left it in a better position. So that's, yeah. uh, that's a good credential. I think he's an excellent choice, Chief. Uh, well no done doubt. to you. Thank you, boys. An exclusive right here on the footy show. First up, uh, as, as you know, Wendell Sale has been on the news. Of course, the former great rugby league Wendell. player for Broncos in Queensland. He's moved to rugby union. Has been in and out of trouble for a couple of years. Found some uh, drama over there in South Africa. We've caught up with Wendell. Danny Widler, this is an exclusive by him with Wendell Sale. Thanks for your time, Wendell. You've copped heaps in South Africa. What's your side of the story? Again, <laughs> I mean, as you know, this is one big media beat up. It's all hype. Nothing happened. I went out for a nice quiet dinner, a quiet dinner, and had a glass of wine. Hey, darling, make yourself useful. Get me another bottle. What do you mean, no? No one says no to Dell. Ah. <laughs> It was still early, you know, so I, th I thought I'd go to the local club just to pass some time, and I had one or two drinks at most. Uh, big Del go wild in Africa, whoa! I'm a cock and a walk, baby, fuck yeah! Whoa, big dogs take it up the ass. <laughs> okay, then I realised it was probably starting to get an hour or two past my bedtime, so uh, I walked out the front and uh, I called the cab. <laughs> what happened then? I had a phone and I was, I was accosted by a friend. Uh, the guy was totally overzealous. He'd come up, he wanted Big Dell's autograph, a lot of people do. And, um, and look, you know, I, ju I just gently pushed him away. You want to diss the Dell? You want to play? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny, you know, look, I was probably a little bit out of order, especially in light of what happened over your last tour. But uh, I just want a message for the fans out there, Danny. I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm going to cop the fine and the suspension and I'm going to be back bigger and better than ever and ready to rip and tear for the Broncos. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean the, I mean the Reds. <laughs> oh, uh, Waratahs. <laughs> Can't bloke have a drink anymore, Danny. Now, you did, you... Now, people, I just want to let you know, I know you're thinking about Wendell at the moment, you think he's ready to stream. I rang Wendell's sale of the day before the tape and I said, Wendell, I'm getting to do an impersonation of you. And he said, mate, go for it. He said, yeah, if you say, Wendell, get on you, mate. Come back to rugby league, honestly. Come back to the Broncos. <laughs> G'day, guys, Joey here. There's two types of people in the world. Those who live in Newcastle and those who wish they did. To all your Knights fans, we're set to start the year as we finished last year. So don't miss a bit of the action. Last year's history. The only way is up, so come along for the ride. Newcastle, our town, our turn, our team. Of course, who's the best player in the game, you reckon, today? <laughs> Andrew Johns? All right. Well, guess what? He's on the show right now. Please make him welcome, Andrew Johns. You 
You're looking pretty frisky. I'm fine. You like the acting, Joey? Your acting? Yeah, it's yeah, good, it was good. Eh? Yeah, it's really good. liked it. Shocking. <laughs> 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 All right, now, what's, what's doing? How's everything been? Yeah, not too bad. It's been an up and down off season, but uh, we've recruited well at Newcastle. It's a good field to play, so uh, I think we'll go better than last year, which isn't real hard. We come last. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you did, you did win, I think, nine of your last 11 once you came back on the field. Now, you didn't have much trial uh, time, uh, but you're telling your fans you're 100% ready to go? Probably not 100 percent. I haven't done too much too much running, but you know nowadays with the training, you do stuff in the the gym on the rowing machine and in the pool. I'm probably around 90 percent mm -hmm. fitness wise, but strength wise, you know I've been in the gym, feel a lot stronger. So that's one positive. But uh, we'll soon see Saturday night. I dare say there's going to be times when I'm dragging my backside around, but that's nothing new. Speaking of, of training and, and injuries, <laughs> Joey, we keep reading in the paper that you're going to have your your training managed. What, what does that mean? What, what, what do you do differently to the other guys then? Uh, well, I think it's just about, you know, Tuesday night sessions when you're doing fitness out in the field. I go up in the gym and I do 20 minutes on the rowing machine, uh, then 10 minutes on the runner, and, and then the rest of the fitness in the pool. Uh, I think there's a few, you know, players in the NRL will do it. I'm so, sure uh, Sean Timmons at the Dragons does that yeah. sort of thing. He's got chronic knee problems. So. Terry Lamb did, yeah. Yeah, Terry Lamb <clears throat> lasted a couple of years with... Uh, you know, a couple of bung knees. So. On 60 Minutes, it showed the extent of your injuries, even the broken back there. You've just about done it all and a lung. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the other thing too, Joe, I, I could ask is, yeah, it's one thing to be able to manage your minutes, but you're such a competitive bloke that a lot of times you don't want to come off the field. But, I mean, you, you need now to be close to bone on bone. It's got to get to the point that, you, you, I mean, you've basically got to save, save yourself a little bit and get off there. Yeah, look, there's time, if we skipped a lead this year, uh, there's times when I'm definitely going to come off the field. Um, and especially at the club at the moment, we've got Kurt Gidley, who I think this year will develop into a, an even better player. And we've got a young guy called Jared Mullen, who you know, people might know too much about him, but he's a real player of the future. So the longer they get on the field together, yep. the better the club is in the future. Don't, don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. I mean, we've got this year to play out, the Premiership to win there. But, I mean, <coughs> if, well, you've signed Brian Smith. I thought you were at Melbourne. Oh, sorry. Yeah, what are you? <laughs> oh, you're in two keys. <laughs> uh, Melbourne, Sharks, Knights, you know, all that stuff. But, mate, like, they've signed Brian Smith. Now, there's been speculation around that you knock heads a little bit. I mean, Smithy, you've got a lot in common. You, know, you both love the game, you're forward thinkers, but he's, he's doggedly focused. You, on the other hand, well, you're, you're different. Andrew, I'll just say that. Oh. <laughs> Glass it? houses, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is speculation. I mean, well, you're, a couple you're... of years ago, we played a trial in 2001, and we scored a try. And um, this is how minute it is. And I was carrying on a little bit, you know, jumping up and down. You no, know, and, no. Yeah. And anyway, he said something, and lo and behold, I spat the dummy, which is, it's very rare. Um, but I just took his, his quote out of context, and then that was all there was. And then somehow, you know, especially in our game, rumours start, and then it just snowballed from there. But look, I've got no problem with Brian Smith, never have. And... I don't know him personally, really. Yeah. Looking forward to working with him next year. Yep. But my focus is this year. Sure. Well, just on that, um, Denny Widler caught up with Brian Smith today and he did a little interview with him. The first question he asked him was uh, how he would go working with Joey. I'm, I'm in total admiration of his, of his, not only of his talent, but of his ability to display that talent just so regularly over such a long period of time. In Andrew, I see a winner, you know, and I see a guy who... I, all of those Newcastle blokes that I've coached in country teams, they have all been, they've all smacked of their absolute desire to compete hard and win. We've got a very stable environment at Parramatta and I think some clubs uh, in doing this sort of thing, if, if it goes on in the future, you know, they could, they could land themselves in a whole heap of poo by doing it. I just wanted to make that announcement after the season, not before. Now, he's got different motivation. You know, I understand and I respect that, but, um, you know, it's not a wise thing to do, in my view, in terms of what, what my goal was, which was to have a, uh, a fully focused team with no interruptions and no distractions, or as little as possible. Yeah, yeah just... well, well said, Brian Smith. And the Knights take on the Eels on, uh, on Saturday night. And Pat, just on yes, that, 5.30 on Saturday night, it's going to be a sellout. It's going to be an absolute huge crowd. Joey, I've got to ask you, you know, about the fact that it's been disruptive for you. You're trying to prepare for the first game, and not only has, you know, the coaches swapped, you know, it's been announced three days before the game starts for the first round of the season. 
and you're playing the team which is swapping. Has it been hard? Has it been a bit of, bit of feedback from the players about how difficult it's been? Or was it yeah, okay? a little bit. Uh, a few of the players have, have come to me and asked you know, what's going on with the coaching in the past couple of weeks. Um, and sort of I've said, oh, I don't really know. You know it's going to work itself out. But uh, I think it's, we're glad now it's out in the open and we can start talking about the game. You know, I'm sick of hearing about it and everywhere we go, people you know, pulling you up and asking you about it. But to answer your question, I don't think it's affected us too much. And I think you know, we'll be right side tonight. It'll be a great crowd, a big crowd. I want to ask you about hunger. Now, you're playing against Tim Smith, who freely says that you're his biggest idol. He built his game in and around you. How hungry are you? You tackle this kid on, on, uh, on Saturday night, you get him down the ground, what do you do? Do you whisper in his ear and uh, tell him you got him and give him a, a bit of a facial around the melon? Or do you give him a rub on top of the head and tell him to keep going? Where are you at this stage? Um, that's a good question. Uh, look, he, he's someone who, who I think is a good player and is potentially a top liner. And uh, uh, you know he's come out openly and said that he likes the way I play. So um, I suppose, I'm going to do him no favours, put it that way, but uh, you know, after the game I'll give you some advice and, and talk to him. But so you're still on, you're going to get into him. You're going to give him a rub in the face and tell him, I've got you covered. You're going to let the young boy get over it. <laughs> it's not the 80s, Chief. Come you're on, tell him. Are you going to poke him in the eye or something? <laughs> Joey, we hope you're around for, for many more seasons, but post-football, are you a coach? I don't know, Sterling. It's, you know, it's something that I think affects your family also, and it's not a job where you can just get away from it. You're thinking about football 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, I like to think of myself maybe, maybe in an assistant role or, or roving role. You know, I, I love passing on what I've learnt, but uh, I, I really don't see myself as a first grade coach. It's too well, much pressure. You might be unaware of this, but you only need 145 points to become the greatest ever point scorer in rugby league. Go past Jason Taylor. I'd yeah, expect. That's it, yeah. I'd expect I'd expect that uh, we'll have you on probably in round uh, 11 or 12 after you've achieved that, you know? Oh, it's something I, I knew I was right up there. I didn't know I was probably that close, but, uh, you know, it, it's a great achievement. and um, some, yeah, some good players on their fat Graham. Oh, yeah, the, Graham, the great bat. He was the best oh, fullback I ever played with. He was just sensational. Hey, stay with us. Opportune time now to introduce our Jim Beam trivia competition. It was on last year. You'll remember it. And it is about our guest tonight, Andrew Johns. So... Joey debuted in first grade in 1993 as an interchange against the Gold Coast. Now, which of the following players was not on the bench with him that day? Was it A, Mark Sargent, B, Steve Crow, C, Paul Marquette, or D, Logan Campbell? Which one of those wasn't with Joey on the bench? Now, to get involved in our Jim Boone trivia competition, you can call that number 1902 552 406 or text 19952 406 and a wonderful prize chief coming up in this competition. What, who do you think, Joey? Do you know the answer? Don't tell anybody, but do you know the answer? I haven't got a clue, Sterling. No, 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 I can't remember the last week. Who was that? Who's Logan Campbell? Was yeah, he a player? He was, he, he was a young Country Samoan kid yeah. come out. Oh, was yeah. he? Gee, not a bad yeah. player, really. Okay, That's sweet. Fun. Right, is it him? Is it if, you can, if you call Sergeant. in a recipe and you can win a wonderful prize from Jim Beam, it's a bar fridge. They're outstanding. Everyone should have one. So yes, get your please. call in and you can win it. One of these. Here it is. Check it out. Each week, one viewer who calls or texts with the correct answer to the Jim Beam footy trivia will be selected at random to win this great Jim Beam prize. Gold. If you ever got a yeah, very nice fridge, fridge there, and uh, you can uh, hopefully win one of them. Fantastic, Joey. Thanks for your time. Please thank Joey Johns for us. You've got to really hope, really a Newcastle fan or not, that, that that bloke has an injury-free season. And if he does, then Newcastle will be very hard to beat. And indeed, New South Wales as well if he plays uh, State of Origin. So we wish you all the best, champ, yeah. for an injury-free season. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they tell me he's had a makeover. I, I, we haven't seen him yet, but please make him welcome. Reggie Reagan! <laughs>
believe what I'm seeing. Oh, fat. I've been on the spam diet. <laughs> <laughs> I look great. Physically, I'm as weak as piss, but I feel great, guys. <laughs> nah, but seriously, but big news for Red Dragon. I've been knocking around with some new talent from Oh, nine. okay, yeah. Got the hair done by Ray yeah. Martin. And a bit of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> bit of plastic surgery. Love you, Bert. But uh, as we know, mate, uh, Eddie's taken over. Yeah, the McGuire, great man. Love him. And he's got some big plans for Red Dragon. Well, I mean, it's been in the pipeline for about 12 months. Oh, really? Just take a look. Man, and if I am, mate, I'm going to put you in as the Minister for Cultural Affairs because you are the man who is actually not only bringing back the Biff, but bringing back manhood to Australia. You're a living, breathing example of what we hold dear to our hearts. Thanks, Eddie. I appreciate that. <laughs> So, yes, Reg. Guys, please. Guys, this is not all beer and Skittles that I've had. I've got a big announcement to make. Look, uh, Eddie, much like myself, has realised that I've outgrown the footy show, guys. Yeah, I know. I've outgrown it. You're too good for us now. Are you too good for us now? Well, that'll do me. And uh, he's got plans for a new show. I can't say what it is, but it's fair to say I might be locked in very soon, guys. <laughs> And uh, we should oh. just, uh, I'm just so excited. He's a great guy. Have you look met him? Look in reds. No, oh, I can't See, wait, Fat. Have a look at you. Now, I know that you are a great cricketer in your days. Yes. Your Sawtell days and yes. Cessna. not. And well, now, I, I happen to catch you on the cricket show as well during the off-season. Yeah, well, what happened? I don't know if you listened to that dribbler, Mark Nicholas and Benno and all the rest of it. I mean, they're just, they're just, it's very sloppy, Fatty. So they've asked me to go in and tidy it up a little bit. Just, right. just take a look at me and Rich here. I've seen many a fax come into the uh, the commentary box, into the cricket show, you know, where's my gig, where's my spot, when am I on? Yep. Uh, that, that's something you aspire to do? Well, I think so. I mean, over the years, everyone's got their chance. Richie got his chance, Richie Benner, uh, Mark Taylor. Even you got your chance. <laughs> I watched SBS, they give Mo Matthews a go. I <laughs> cried myself to sleep that night. <laughs> but, you know, and finally I'm going to be given a go, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. This does bring us back. Richie. Mr. Benner. Richie Benner. Red Dragon. Red Hello, how are you? Nice to set. Hello. It's a big kiss job. How are you doing? Yeah, you good? Right, I spent a bit of time in France myself, yeah, so. I yeah. haven't been kissed by a guy with a moustache for weeks. 74 years. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Do you see yourself being a, a Bill Laurie or a Richie Benno? Geez, one could only dream. Look, I've watched Richie for years and years, and uh, yeah, Richie and Bill have been around the game for so long. One day, look, yeah. I'm going to come out and say it. I want to be like them. Concentrate on what's going out, on out in the centre. Yep. Concentrate on the monitor, and whatever you say must add to whatever's on the monitor. Don't describe what's on the monitor. Add. Do you realise you're in Richie's seat, you know? Yeah, that? Oh, really? You're in Richie's seat there. Yeah. I'll just keep it warm for him. Keep it warm yeah. for him? Yeah. Okay. Rich, they love this pitch. I love you. Great to meet you again. <laughs> I wish you all the best. More kisses. Who yeah. could be so lucky? The great man. Now, not only he's a, he's a great guy, Richie oh, yeah. Benner. Yeah, he's just a great guy. We went and watched Breakback Mountain last night together. So we've seen it five times together. He just loves that movie. <laughs> Conscious that so many strange images and thoughts. Now, not only the uh, not only the cricket, but the races. Yes. You've got, there's a racehorse called yes. Red Dragon. There's a racehorse called Red Dragon. Let me tell you, it's like its name say. Hey, it's no gelding, people. <laughs> she make a lot of money when she goes to stud. But, uh, oh, look, it's fantastic. And it's called the Sport of Kings, Pat. Did it you is. know that? Yeah. It is. It is. And uh, it's been fantastic. A dream come true. All right. Now, guys, look, I just want to it? say, Pat, that's it. I just want to say farewells. I appreciate your support over the years. Oh. Uh, are you, you, Peter you, and, are you uh, really leaving us, Rich? The other bloke. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> people. You've been big fans of mine. Oh. Oh. Guys, I love you. And guys, good luck with the show. Yeah. See you.
Super looking trim, short and terrific Red Dragon smacks of a comeback, I reckon, Chief. Mate, if he goes, I'll be devastated. No, he'll stay he with can't us. go. He might make a comeback at Wapey this weekend. Is a bit of the pressure off for you, do you think, in the sense that you know you're only going to be there for one year, so you can just go a million miles an hour? Uh, I mean, every year's, you know, you, you approach every year the same, I guess, and you want to do you want to do well by your football club and, and the players want to do well, so things haven't changed too much in that regard for me, and I think, you know, we're just looking forward to having a big year and, and doing the best we possibly can. <laughs> talking about all things footy, it is time to go back to... <laughs> And here we are back at Leichhardt Oval. And we're at the Jim Beam Bar. Danny Widler's with us. Dan, uh, big news with Brian Smith, of course. Three-year contract with Newcastle. Parramatta playing Newcastle this weekend. What else is happening at Parramatta? Look, I think there are going to be some de major developments around the players at Parramatta. Don't be surprised if a couple of players follow Brian Smith in Newcastle. Maybe Dean Witters, maybe Ben Smith. And there could be some players go back the other way. Watch, some, watch for some swapsies there now. OK, we've seen Andrew Johns swapsies. on the show tonight. Some interesting news coming his way. Andrew Johns didn't really talk about his representative future. Everybody wants to know about that. Don't be surprised if Ricky Stewart goes really hard on Andrew Johns and makes him play in this upcoming test match as a farewell test. If he can get him to do that, maybe he'll play Origin. That'll be up to Andrew to decide. But Ricky Stewart wants him to play in the test matches at the end of the year as well, even if he doesn't play Origin. Time for a few predictions. Here we go. Let's go top four and the winner of the comp for this season. will go, uh, there's my top four. Dragons, Roosters, Storm and the Eagles. And I think this is the Dragons' year. I think they've got the personnel to win it. Sterlo, is it up next? It is, yeah. Look, I've gone the Dragons, Eels, Cowboys and the Roosters. But look, realistically... Any team can make the top four this year. It's just that tight. But before a ball's kicked, that's who I like. All right. Chef? Yeah, I've gone with the Roosters, uh, Tigers and Dragons and also the Knights. Look, I've, I've picked the Roosters and the Knights. <laughs> Look, I don't know who I picked here. They're all pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just say this. I have picked the, the Knights and the Roosters. <laughs> You've just been... I can't see it's too far away. Do you want to read anyway, that? I've picked two teams out of the top eight that didn't make the top eight last year in the top four, so it's really a topsy turvy year. Uh, Thanks for a little. Take it away. Sweet. Just the same. Back next week. Okay, we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got the Roosters there, we've got the Tigers, uh, the Knights, and I think the Storm are getting in there. I mean, uh, they've got some very good players to Storm. Players like Greg Inglis and uh, Billy Slater, I can tell you, is absolutely flying Looking at the moment. Coaching there, mate. Now, everyone's waiting for the Jim Beam trivia. Of course, the question was, boys, oh, yes. who was the uh, player who was not on the bench mm -hmm. when Joey made his debut in 1993? Mm -hmm. Incidentally, Joey wanted to play fullback that night, and the answer is B, Stephen, Stephen Crow, who incidentally... <laughs> He's the uh, football the manager of the Knights. Knights. Like a big Crow. heart and a They're huge set of ears. And going <laughs> down. He has absolutely huge. Hate Sutherland. All right, we'll announce the winner win next week. Yeah, why not? All right, That'll sweet. Be. All right, that's it. Our first show of the season. Everything okay with that? Yeah. Sweet. Good. Got through our first one. Now, we're actually uh, off there for the next two weeks. The Commonwealth Games, you'll, this time next week, you'll be watching the Commonwealth Games. We are back on air on the 30th of March with our second show of the year. Until then, be good, be safe. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Bye for now. is on deck and raring to go. We'll see him in action here in Newcastle at 5.30 as the Knights take on the Eels. Yes, it's Super Saturday. We're here at Energy Australia Stadium in Newcastle. Warren Smith along with Laurie Daly to bring you the clash between the Newcastle Knights and the Parramatta Eels. And Laurie, there's been so much history between these two clubs in recent seasons. We thought we might take a look back and capture the top five moments as far as we see them in recent times between these two famous clubs. What history there is between the Parramatta Eels and the Newcastle Knights. Oh, look, I'm looking forward to the clash today. And in 2000, the Eels led the Knights by 23 points to 16 with just six minutes remaining and looked to have the game firmly in hand. But Adam McDougall and Billy Peaton gave the Newcastle fans the grandstand finish they were hoping for as they snatched a 26-23 win. What a moment that was for Billy Peaton. Now on the coaching staff here in Newcastle. In round 14 last year, it was the Eels' turn to rattle up a score when they crossed 
eight tries and whacked the Knights by 50 points. On what was a long and painful night for the Newcastle faithful, one exasperated fan became so infuriated with his team's inept performance, he jumped the fence and took to the field in an attempt to shore up the Knights' leaky defensive line. But it didn't work. The Eels recorded their biggest ever win over the Knights. In one of the more bizarre refereeing performances of recent time, top whistleblower Bill Harrigan sent not one, not two, not three, but four Parramatta players to the sin bin in the second half of their Friday night clash at Energy Australia Stadium in 2002. Eel centre Michael Butner was given two chances to cool down. And Brian Smith was left dumbstruck. It was just the third minute of round three in 2004 when Andrew Johns ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament, ending the season not only of the game's number one playmaker, but the Newcastle Knights as well. 2001 was meant to be the year of the Eels, but the upstart Knights had other ideas. With Clive Churchill medalist Andrew Johns leading the way, Newcastle blew Parramatta off the park in the first 40 minutes, scoring four tries and taking a 24-0 lead to the break. Despite a second-half comeback by the minor premiers, the Knights held on to win 30-24 and claimed their second first-grade premiership. It was a win for Michael Hagan at his first attempt as an NRL coach, of course, and just more pain for Brian Smith. And amazingly, at the end of this season, they'll swap jobs, and here they are meeting in the first round tonight. An amazing coincidence. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that in 2007 we already know where these two players, uh, two coaches, will be, and the, uh, coincidence that they will be coaching against one another uh, tonight. But look, both these coaches are quality. They will prepare their sides first class, and you know that we're in for a great game because they're both winners. But Newcastle fans, I'm sure, are salivating at the prospect of watching Brian Carney on the right wing for the Knights tonight. Uh, the former, or well, still current, Great Britain international, of course, has played 12 test matches for Great Britain. We'll see what he can do in the NRL for the first time here this evening. Well, I'm sure the fans uh, will be attracted by his ability because he scores plenty of points. And already this season, in the two trials that they've played, he scored three tries. So he's a finisher. The Newcastle fans, what a combination they will get to enjoy Brian. Brian Carney and also Matthew Gidley on that right side of the field. He has proven himself at test level. Now it's up to him proving himself week in, week out in the toughest competition in the, in the uh, toughest rugby league competition in the world. And it will be a real battle on that side of the field with Matthew Gidley playing inside Brian Carney, opposing Ben Smith, the rookie who uh, wowed everybody in 2005, and Eric Groth up against Brian Carney. A real head-to-head -head battle to look forward to tonight right here in Newcastle. Let's hear from the Knights coach now. Michael Hagan might have a few words of advice perhaps before kickoff for Brian Carney. He's also speaking with Greg Alexander. Mick, another busy year ahead, but uh, what a way to start here at home uh, in front of a full crowd. Yeah, excellent way to start. We haven't been here for round one for three years, so it's a, a great occasion for our club and I think everyone's looking forward to fans and the players. How's the preparation be? Trial matches against Penrith and the Sharks? Yeah, reasonably happy. I think, um, you know, our last trial we've got something like our best team on the field for about 30 minutes and they got through a fair bit but I'm not expecting this to be our, at our best in round one but I think it'll you know a couple of weeks for every team I guess and we'll see some pretty fair football played. How's the uh, the Great Britain winger Brian Carney settling in? He, he should be a, a real crowd favourite here. Yeah he's become a bit of a favourite amongst the players in his short time here and I've got no doubt he'll be a, a real um, crowd pleaser for the fans who come along and watch him. All the best today Mick and for the rest of the year. Thanks mate Tal. They're looking forward to seeing Brian Carney in action. They're also looking forward to seeing Andrew Johns in action. The captain will start the season once again under something of a cloud with his knee, uh, giving him some trouble in the off-season. He had that operated on again once more at the end of 2005. We'll see how Joey handles 80 minutes tonight, having played just 20 minutes during the trial matches. Yeah, he'll be OK. I'm sure he'll be ready to rip and tear tonight. Look, Newcastle, while they did win the wooden spoon last year, they showed us what they were capable at the end of the season. They won 8 out of 11. And that is a strong lineup for the Newcastle Knight. At stages last year, they had an inexperienced lineup, and in fact, they used nine first grade pl uh, nine players last year made their debut in first grade. Okay, well, let's see what happened at the toss. Our referee tonight is Russell Smith, and he's with the captains Andrew Johns and Nathan Kalis. Andrew, you'll toss, please. You'll call, please, Nathan. Hey. It says, mate, do you want to kick off or choose which way? Run that way. So you're you're running you run that way, yeah. So you're kicking from right to left as we go out and you're kicking that way. Yeah. Okay. Best of luck, mate. That's right. Best of luck, mate. Thanks, mate. All the best, mate. 
Andrew, it was a disrupted off-season for you, 25 minutes against the Sharks in the trial match. Are you fit and ready? Uh, probably not 100%, probably around 90, 85%, but hopefully my experience can get me through. Um, you know, wouldn't want to miss this one, it's going to be a cracking crowd and they're always great games against Parramatta, so expect a big one. Now, plenty of injuries last year. One of the players to shine, but he came to the club midway through the season, Milton Thiday, the fullback. He's had a full pre-season, uh, should be better for it. Yeah, he's put about six kilo on and he's a real uh, match winner for us. Uh, he's, he's one of those blokes that is always something doing uh, when he's around the ball and I th I know he's going to be real dangerous today. Thanks, Joey. All the best. And he's led his side to a 25 points to 6 win to begin 2006 in the NRL. Well, there's plenty of belief in this Newcastle side. They finished off the end of 2005, winning 8 out of their last 11 and continued on that roll in first game of 2006. Their senior players led the way and the youngsters actually followed. They got over the advantage line. They come up with the, with the plays when they were required. And their interchange in the second half certainly made an impact. Parramatta just dropped far too much ball. But the signs were there that they will improve. Right, Nathan Hindmarsh had his moments after starting the game from the bench tonight. His first serious workout of the season. And they were a little underdone, the Eels, in the forward pack as we go downstairs to Greg Alexander. Yeah, thanks, Warren. I'm here with Andrew Johnson, the Knights captain. Joey, what a great way to start the year in front of a, a, a terrific crowd. They love it up here, don't they? Yeah, mate, it's a, a great way to start the year. And our defence then was phenomenal. We just kept scrambling. And we're patient in attack and um, probably wasn't too flashy, but they're the good wins. Now, you said before the game you're between 85 and 90% fit. You wasn't the sort of way to start off, was it? A couple of, couple of early ones? Uh, Mate, I was definitely blown out there at some stage, but uh, you know, a few more games will get the match fitness. But uh, you know, blow behind you, Brian Carney. Great to meet the club and just hope your strike rate on the field is better than it off. Thanks, Joey. All the best. Brian, w welcome to Australia and welcome to the NRL. Thanks, mate. Uh, it's, it's everything they said it would be. It's a tough and fast one. Geez, a good way to start. Yeah, and not bad to get over, over the line in your first game either. I uh, hope that will happen a bit outside Gids, but. That's magic tonight, that atmosphere. Uh, full house, uh, tremendous. You now we talk, about, we talk about the crowds in England having terrific atmosphere, but uh, these people in Newcastle just love their rugby league. And uh, to be a sellout stadium, first game and get a win, not a better start. The atmosphere in England is sensational. Everybody knows that. That, that matches it. That's every bit as good. They're, they're sensational tonight. So we're delighted for them. They've shown us good support. We've got a good win up. So let's hope it continues through the season. Look, all the best. Congratulations on your first game. All the best for the year. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Brian Carney. It's not too often that Greg Alexander gets called sir but he did tonight by this man the flying winger on the right hand side of the field for the Knights he played a very entertaining role tonight scoring a try in the first half five minutes out from the break little flick off the boot as well to field one kick and he was very heavily involved from the outset and were able to work to him with Matt Gidley and Kurt Gidley inside him giving him some good service as well. Andrew John starts the season with a win with the Knights. We'll take a break and come back on Super Saturday to wrap up this portion right after this. It's full time here in Newcastle to begin 2006. The Knights have beaten the Eels 25 points to six. There was only two points in it at the break, but they ran away from them and scored all the points in the second half to win by 19 comfortably in the end. And Milton Friday had quite a game, scored a try in the first half. Good effort there to get across the line. And he was involved both in defense, as we saw in the second half, and attack throughout the match. Exceptional talent, Milton Friday, and a real crowd pleaser here at Energy Australia Stadium. Looked dangerous every time he had the football. The Knights, they were spent a lot of the, of the possession in their own half working off their line, but you look at the completion rates. Michael Hagen would be extremely happy with the fact that he side in the second half. They went to their fifth tackle, they built a bit of pressure, whereas Parramatta, every time they looked as though they were starting to build something, they turned the ball over. They had 15 errors in the game, 26 missed tackles. A lot to like about their performance. They were gutsy, but when it came to the crunch, they just couldn't uh, get the big plays when they were required.
I'm not sure what Michael Hagen made of the Parramatta Eels. Of course, he'll be their coach in 2007. But for the moment, he'll be happy that the Knights are on the board for 2006. Last year, they lost 13 games straight to start the season. They've recorded a win first up tonight. And here is Michael Hagen with Greg Alexander. Well, what a great start to the match. First time you handled the ball, you went over for points. Uh, and then in the, in, the, in the rest of that first half, it really was Parramatta, but your blokes were terrific in the second half. Yeah, I just thought it was always going to be a tough game first up, a, a, an old arm wrestle, as they say, and I thought our blokes toughed it out in the first half. They had about six or eight sets on our line, and we, we handled most of that pretty well, and I thought our second half, our patience was good. And the defence was excellent for the game. Yeah, one of the players we highlighted before the game, Milton Thiday, uh, a player that came to the club midway through the year, had a full pre-season. Outstanding. Yeah, I thought he was brilliant at times and had some very nice touches. Uh, also very tough in defence when he's needed to be. And I thought Brian Carney and our back three actually were very, very good. Now, last year you won eight from your, your last 11. You, you probably were close to the best side in the competition towards the end of the season. And the sort of confidence you get from that and the fact that Andrew Johns is on the field is just unbelievable. Oh, it's just good to have a, some of our best players starting the year and we're not going to be at our best for a couple of weeks, but it's nice to be able to tough a win out first up and hopefully we can build on that as the year goes on. Thanks, Mick. All the best. Thanks, mate. OK, let's go back downstairs to Greg Alexander. Yeah, g'day, Warren. Look, Andrew Johns, uh, as, as you blokes said, through the call of the game, uh, he just takes the right options. Whenever the Newcastle team get right up close to that line, Andrew Johns has either got a dummy inside and he gives his players on the outside space. He gave Milton Thiday space for the first try and he created space for Matt Gidley and Brian Carney for that second try. Look, he'll be better for the run too. Andrew Johns, don't, rem don't forget, he said he was about 85% fit. He didn't kick goals early, had a slight groin strain. Uh, he he'll certainly be better for the run and uh, watch out for the Knights in 2006, I think. Welcome back, Jimmy. You settled in nicely, champ. Going Thanks, good. Yeah. Enjoying Thanks, yourself? Going, going good. Yeah. Good looking bloke, too. Got all your notes <laughs> down there, too. <laughs> I thought that everyone did that. Very I'm impressive. Oh, yeah. Steal no, some no, of Pete's no, notes. Hey, not everyone. Not everyone. <laughs> no, we used to. <laughs> All right, now, of course, uh, yesterday uh, there was three games, and the first one we're going to have a look at is the Knights took on the Eels, and a great victory to the Knights, 25 points to six. And, well, that man, Andrew Johns, once again involved in four of their five tries, and he was fantastic. Yeah, good game. I mean, fantastic when you consider the Knights. I mean, I think 12 to one yesterday. I mean, that'll shorten up today. They'll, they'll come right in, considering they played one of the Premiership favourites in the Eels and put the cleaner through them. And the Knights have still got a mile of improvement. I want to give special mention to Milton Thiday. Boys, again, I, I said it last year, and I, and I think even more so this year. I think he is the biggest threat to Minicello's number one origin jersey. I think That's he's that cool. good. Really? Yeah, I really think really he's mean, that well, good. Well, he has got speed. I mean, he is blistering. Yeah, and Brian Carney, there is the Irishman. Second Irishman ever to play in the NRL. Got a, a, a try on debut. Fantastic. That is one of the best gigs in the NRL, isn't it? Playing right winger outside of Matty Gidley. Oh, yeah. Arguably with Mark Gasney playing uh, right mm. winger outside of him. But uh, to be outside of Matt Gidley first up when you come to the NRL, that's a bonus for Brian Carney. Defensively, it's as good as I've seen Newcastle for a long, long time. I thought they controlled the game. I thought they slowed the play, the ball down enough so that they didn't have too many problems from Parramatta, who really played a lot of one-out football, didn't show a lot of creativity. But just the, the, the intensity, the enthusiasm of Newcastle, they enjoyed playing in front of a, a bumper crowd up there. It was all made to order for one of their big performances. I've seen Andrew Johns play a lot better than last mm, night. Yeah. Mm. But if they can keep, obviously, him and Badiris healthy, but also the likes of the Gidley brothers, Steve Simpson, Thigh Day. Um, yeah. <laughs> the wooden spoon has just knocked off the minor well, previous Well, like Regan night. Tenner. Regan Tenner had a very strong game yesterday. Um, also, uh, I mean, uh, Craig Smith was outstanding. He's, what is he, oh. 43? <laughs> yeah. No. And he's still going around. He's, he's, you know, leads the pack so well. And that was a very impressive win by Newcastle. Yeah, it was a bit of an ugly incident in the game yesterday. Oh, uh, unbelievable. Just, Horrendous, you know. There was You've been a, giving Joey boxing lessons. Yeah, there was uh, Andrew Johns got into a fight with uh, Nathan Kalis. We got a vision of it just here. Actually, sorry, it's not Nathan Kalis. It's actually it's a two on his back. That's uh, that's <laughs> Luke Burt, and uh, and Luke Burt just unloaded on Andrew Johns. And as Andrew, as Peter said, I've seen Andrew Johns play better. That's because he was concussed for uh, for the rest of the match. But uh, look at there, he's looking very dishevelled there. Boys. I, I think Luke Burt has seen some footage of Jamie Goddard in the past and, well, and liked his chances. Quite a fair so, so. I mean, I mean, I've got to say, Pete, there's an excuse if you get knocked out by a hooker, especially by a tough guy like Jimmy Goddard, but Luke Burt. Oh, please. please. Now, Mark Riddell was named in the number 14 jumper, but we believe he played Premier League 
Uh, so Brian Smith made a tough decision there to not play him, whether it's his fitness or... Well, the best football I've seen Parramatta play has generally been off the back of a really good first 20, 25 minutes mm. to open the game with Mark Riddell. P they're a good side later on with PJ Marsh. I thought Josh Cordova was excellent in his first grade debut for the, for the Eels last night, but I don't know what the story is with Mark Riddell, but... I think mm. we'd like to see him back on the paddock. I mean, actually, later. I've seen Mark when he's been three or four kilos overweight play his best football because he plays like a second row and yeah. charges in. So I'm sure he'll be back in that side very, very soon. Now, the man who runs NBN up there in Newcastle, <laughs> Jim Callanan, he did the interviews for us after the game. Yeah, Jim. Mate, what's the best way to describe that performance? Uh, sloppy. Poor, de uh, poor uh, ball control, just asked too much of our defence. I thought in patches today we had some really strong, aggressive defence and it was a fierce contest. But, you know, we became lopsided because we just didn't hold the ball enough to mount some pressure and put some back there on them. Joe, always good to get the victory song uh, pumping on the, on the first night, mate. Oh, it was a tough one, Jimmy. It's a um, you know, great win by the guys. You know, a lot of spirit shown and high-quality game, but defence won us the game and we, we played pretty boring but still scored 25 points, so it's a pleasing bit. All right, Ben, well, a tough way to, to start the year, always coming up to Newcastle, just not quite the result you're after. Yeah, exactly, mate. We knew it was going to be a big ask to come up here, especially a sold-out crowd and, you know, Newcastle full, full strength side and um, they were ready to have a go from last year, but, mate, it was disappointing for us to, you know, come up here for a loss. What about yourself, mate? Um, you haven't had a lot of pre-season. Uh, had the body hold up? Yeah, no, I haven't done much at all. I, I knew I'd be a bit underdone and uh, that when that sun was out there in the first half, I was, I was blowing, uh, you know, a lot, but uh, as soon as I went down, we got back into a bit of a rhythm and a bit of a rust got blown out, so um, no, I'm, I'm, personally, I'm looking forward to next week. Well, mate, result, obviously, what you wanted. Performance uh, equally there or a bit to improve on? Oh, there's always something to improve on, but I think a great uh, first-up win and a, I thought a pretty good, solid effort over 80 minutes. You know, boys were under the pump at times and, you know, it was hot and uh, it was pretty physical at times, so I think they were happy to get away with the win and, and got through it reasonably unscathed, so that was good. Yeah, a few issues there. Clint Newton, I guess, is the major worry at the moment. Yeah, a bit of a uh, lower back injury, but uh, I'm not sure what that means yet. But apart from that, we're not too bad. Yeah, thanks, Jim, and thanks to all the players. Now, after watching the Knights win nine of their last 11 last year when Andrew Johns came back into the side, I tipped them to finish about top six this year. Matthew, what about yourself? Yeah, I think they're going to be right up there, Fat. I think that they've got the capability to be there on grand final day. I think they're that good. I think we're starting to see a Knights side that are finding the balance between the razzle-dazzle and that high percentage style football. I mean, there were little... There were, there were moments in the game yesterday which I thought they went away from their game plan. They got, the, the forwards don't necessarily need to be throwing these frivolous offloads out the back. Mm. I think if the Knights simplify their go forward, get forward, play the, bo the ball quick. They've got to understand off quick play the balls, they've got people like Andrew Johns, Kurt Gidley, Danny Badiris, Milton Thiday coming on the back of that. I mean, a retreating defence against Andrew Johns, I mean, they're unstoppable. Mm. You know, I think they're going to give it a, a real shake, the Knights. Uh, as far as key players concerned, look, I'd, I'd be pretentious to say anyone but Andrew Johns and Danny Medeiros. I mean, they're the obvious. Andrew Johns is just this enormous driving force in attack, you know, and he, he, and he really, I mean, he, he might have lost a yard with that knee injury, but he's just, he's just so much clever up top. He had a great season last year, finished the season so well. And he kicked off last night, probably not with his best football, but he's one of those halfbacks, one of those rare halfbacks in the competition who can still control the game when his forwards aren't dominating. Mm. And, and he's the only one in the competition who can do that huge advantage. He's the best halfback by far in the competition that if there's a chance on, he knows the right option and where to go with the football. He showed that a couple of times. He just put himself into the game after a bust was made and all of a sudden mm. he's, he's gone the right way and thrown the right pass. And if Andrew's a driving force in attack, this place is a driving force in defence. I mean, he, he adds a lot of variation around the ruck, but he's speed to the line, you know, he's just, he really is the heart and soul in defence for, for the Newcastle side. Cleans up a lot, he's a tremendous player. He, he didn't have the, the greatest try series, he was playing, I think, a little bit tired, but the way he played yesterday, I think he's back to his best, Danny, so well done. Well, Parramatta coach Brian Smith is heading to Newcastle next year and he must have been impressed by what he saw as the Knights thumped the Eels last night. Penrith won an arm wrestle against the Bulldogs, Canberra outclassed Manly and last year's wooden spooners got off to a flyer. His side may have been beaten by 19 points, but Parramatta coach Brian Smith was the psychological winner, not that he's celebrating. You know, none of that's got anything to do with the players. None of that has a distraction this week. If they, if they and I'm sure they wouldn't try to use that as, as some sort of reason for it, I'd be very surprised. He and Newcastle mentor Michael Hagan will trade places in 2007. Smith could afford a private smile as the Andrew Johns inspired Knights put on a show. I mean, they worked him over pretty hard in the first half and um, 
and he handled it typically in typical fashion. But uh, I thought uh, just a real good eye. Good overall effort for the team. The Eels' defence failing to contain last year's wooden spooners, looking to make their mark in 2006. Serial pest Peter Hoare making his own mark before kickoff, kicking the ball at Johns before releasing cats from a cage and ultimately getting removed by security. And last night in Newcastle, the coach swapping Knights and Eels went head to head at his last year's wooden spooners upstaged the minor premiers on a night of upsets. Parramatta was pumped for a big game and while Luke Bird took a points decision over Andrew Johns on the scoreboard, it was the Knights by a knockout. What a try to the Newcastle Knights! Mate, it's great to be a part of it. You know, it's a good feeling at the club at the moment and, um, you know, fingers crossed we're, you know, we're in for a big year. But how do you think the rival coaches must have been feeling given at season's end they'll be trading places? Although Brian Smith wasn't using the drama of last week as an excuse for Parramatta's poor form. I didn't have a day off this week, that's all it meant. <laughs> Any consolation for you that next time you come up here, mate, at least the, the guys here will be cheering for you? I hope so. Newcastle's Brian Carney has apologised for an altercation at a Sydney hotel overnight which saw him fined $550 by police. Scott McKinnon for Sports Tonight. Scoreboard runs out of numbers down there in Canberra. 96 points in the game so far. Are we going to see the three figures? That was a little high for Phil Graham. A warning on the run. Kidley with a no look at a Brian Carney. A little bit of open space. He beats Phil Graham. Back to Matthew Gidley. Long ball to Joey Johns. He puts boot to ball. Looking for the right bounce. He gets it. Here come the Knights. It is another Newcastle try. Over 100 points in under 80 minutes of football. Now... It's said that if you hang around long enough, you'll see just about everything, or maybe even hear everything. But I never thought we'd see 100 points scored in a first grade game. In Canberra yesterday, there was a try every time Wayne Pearce did a push-up. But unfortunately for the home team, Junior was in the Fox Sports commentary box and not wearing a Raiders jersey. 18 tries in the game. It's mm. unbelievable, isn't it? 60 points in the second half. 12, 12 to the Newcastle side, 6 to the Canberra side. And Canberra actually in the game till about the 24th minute. <laughs> it was 16-8. Yes. 16-8. 12-8. Yeah, 12-8, yeah, 16-8, and then at half time, I think it was 34-8 to the Knights, and Andrew Johns was just mm. absolutely tore the, the Raiders' side apart in mm. that first half. Uh, then the Raiders got back into the game after half time. They scored the next two. It was 34-20. It was a game on. They've just got so much talent, the Newcastle Knights. They can hurt you from anywhere. With Johns, with his width that he plays with in the inside balls, they've got Badiris around the middle of the park who can create those options as well with inside plays and, and plays to attract the markers in and get the, uh, your forwards to play in behind the back of the ruck. But they just blew that game wide open, didn't they, 10 yeah. minutes before half-time? Yeah, they, they ran did. in four tries and bang, the game was over. It was all over, yeah. To the Raiders' defence, they lost three more players. They, they've got a host of players sitting on the sideline. Uh, they lost another three this week, uh, so yeah. things aren't good this early in the season down in no, down in the capital. Like they, they've got plenty of players sitting on the sideline. That doesn't excuse what happened no, out there. But they, they lacked ideas and they lacked, lacked options, which is something that you really don't associate with a Matthew Elliott coach side because they really are a well-structured team and they play to their ability most weeks. Yeah. I think that would have been very disappointing on their behalf because I think they lacked commitment and desire and made well, plenty of poor choices with well, their defence. Yeah, that, well, that's commitment was the one thing that I'd, I'd say that he'd be disappointed with and they'll be addressing this week. I don't know what to say about uh, what happened in the second half, so let's just roll the tape again and take a look at tries, tries and more tries. Uh, Troy Thompson's able to crash over here and get through some defence, a big fend there, but the Knights, uh, they scored plenty. Oh, no, uh, well, we will talk about the Newcastle Knights, but they'd be have to be disappointed with allowing 32 points too, wouldn't they? Oh, mildly. I think scoring yeah. 70 sort of, you know, makes up for... 32 is a lot. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, they were yeah. a bit scrappy, but yeah. the, the game was sort of... As you said, they blew the game apart mm. in the first half. Uh, you know, Michael Hagan, I think you just might be able to overlook the, the tries that Canberra ran in because mm. Newcastle were just that Well, good. if you're looking for perfection, I'd be disappointed in my team. Mm. Scoring 70 but conceding 32. Well, as a coach, you're, you're never mm. happy with a performance, are you? No. So he's no. not going to say, boys, you did terrific, you scored mm. 70. He will be looking at things that, where they can improve. Because them. you've got to practice it. Because somewhere down the road, you're going to be in a tight situation and you'll let someone back in. 
it, Milton Friday. Now we're, we're up in uh, up in Newcastle for the first game. Yep. He will be an excitement machine this year. Where's he, he going to play for? Has well, that been sorted out yet? New South Wales or Queensland? Well, we'll you're the selector. Yeah. I, you you should, guys know. <laughs> don't you know? Yeah, uh, well, can you pick him or not? Well, we're not uh, quite certain yet. But obviously we haven't had a select meeting yet. We had our first one before the start of the competition. We tossed around some ideas. Is he a chance? Oh, look, I think he'd be a I know Mini had shot. a bad I game yesterday, but gee, I think he'd be a that's long a big shot. call. I think he'd be a long shot. Fair I think enough. Anthony Minicello, well, if he's fit. One, one, well, one wing spot's but taken but up with Hazard. If Anthony Minicello is fit, I'm assuming that he would be fullback. Basically, all you want to do is make him a New South Welshman, no matter what happens, just so Queensland can't pick him. Well, they've got plenty of fullbacks to choose from here. <laughs> so, what is Come it? on. <laughs> you just want to deny them another player to no, look at. No, I'm not That's like the that sole one. That's the sole motivation. I'm about, I'm about you know, people <laughs> prospering. The talent and talent going forward. Going forward. As an organisation. And, yes, and, you know, <laughs> making themselves available. You'll either be in a blue jersey or none. Right? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, Andrew Johns played the entire 80 minutes yesterday, which was a surprise given the scoreline and given that he was going to be given a fair rest at times this year. But Andrew wanted to stay out there. He scored 30 points, which, of course, moves him ever closer to that uh, record of Jason Taylor. It takes him into third spot, doesn't it? Moves yep. him up yep. past Mick Cronin. Uh, 1,998 points. You'd think that Joey, well, if, he, if you go on the rate that he was scoring yesterday, it won't take him too many more games to, to get Jason Taylor. No, 1998. But, Joey, just commenting on the 80 minutes, I think he, he needed to play 80 minutes. After watching him last week, mm. he was a bit rusty. He hadn't played much trial football. He probably needed to get the run under his belt, and he did plenty of running. Scored a couple, set up about nine. <laughs> or more. <laughs> Newcastle has promised tight security for Friday night's match against the Bulldogs in the wake of last weekend's ugly crowd violence. NRL and Bulldogs officials will meet with the police commissioner tomorrow to discuss how to deal with violent fans. Their scenes the Bulldogs and Rugby League don't want repeated. It's been said a million times by this club that, and, and you know, everyone in Rugby League, no one condones that sort of thing in the, in the, uh, in the crowd and, uh, you know, I hope, the, I hope they throw the book at them. The potential for severe penalties turning Bulldogs players against those who claim to support them. It would be disappointing for the players to work so hard um, and then to lose competition points for things that are out of our hands would be pretty disappointing. Newcastle promising extra security for Friday's home match with the Bulldogs. Certainly we will be looking at um, looking at making the place as secure as we can. The impact of crowd violence not just affecting the Bulldogs, rival players fed up with the disgusting scenes and offering strong solutions. What's the few games in soccer where over in Europe that if, if their fans play up they just lock them all out and the teams have to play to to, uh, to an empty stadium, so it might be a bit drastic, but uh, might be something to look at. The NRL today scheduling the Bulldogs' home game against Manly in Round 7 as a day fixture, an attempt to avoid further nighttime hostility. Castle has announced an increase in police and security staff numbers for Friday night's game against the Bulldogs, but with big crowds, that's nothing new. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. At the end of uh, last year, of course, Andrew Johns also had the chance to uh, go over there and play with Warrington. And uh, the publicity he got out here was amazing. I can't imagine what it was like over there. Yeah, well, he, he done me a favour, actually. He, um, he took a, a lot of the pressure off me, so uh, I, uh, I went under the radar a bit. And, but it was, it was really good for the game over there. It, I mean, I don't think the rugby league has ever been on the, on the front page of, uh, of a newspaper, but it was when, when Joey went over. And, Unfortunately, it didn't go as well as he would have liked, but it still created a massive amount of publicity, which was, which was good. There'll be a heavy police presence at tonight's clash between the Knights and the Bulldogs in Newcastle after ugly crowd violence marred the Dogs' home match last week. Up to 150 police officers will be there to curb any aggression in the stands, but it will be a different matter on the park. The Bulldogs' pack hasn't shied away from fiery on-field confrontations this season and is promising a similar approach tonight. Our forwards are probably... Bit disappointing last year, and I think we've taken, uh, you know, individually this year that we uh, we have to stand up. Mason and Marco merely the chief destroyers in the opening rounds, spurred on by the disappointment of 2005. We're not going to be, you know, embarrassed like we were last year. You know, we got flogged by 50 points, you know, two weeks in a row by Power and West Tigers, and that, you know, not just individually but as a club, it just really was probably the lowest point of my career and probably the club's. The Knights fresh off a 70-point haul against Canberra, but insist they're still below their best. 
you know, we're still another couple of weeks away from being at our best uh, from a match conditioning point of view. So. Both Josh Perry and Kurt Gidley have passed fitness tests for Newcastle. Anthony Quinn's two-match suspension opening the door for David Siege to take his place on the wing. A disappointing new era for rugby league begins tonight. Riot police will be on patrol in Newcastle when the Knights take on the Bulldogs, some of whose supporters were blamed for last week's ugly crowd brawl at Telstra Stadium. Peter Stefanovic is at Energy Australia Stadium. Peter, I understand police have just finished their briefing. What are their orders for tonight? Well, quite simple, Mark. To protect the spectators, about 100 officers, many from the riot squad, will be sent inside Newcastle Stadium tonight. Now, their job is, as I say, to protect the, spec uh, the spectators. Now, outside, there'll be about 50 officers at bus stops, at train stations, along the highway, the F3, from Sydney to Newcastle, to stop any of the antisocial behaviour that we saw last week. And what's the atmosphere like there, Peter? Any signs of trouble at this stage? Doesn't seem to be at the moment, Mark, but there is still about an hour and a half to go before the big game. But according to Malcolm No, the Bulldogs chief, who I spoke to about an hour ago, he doesn't expect as many Bulldog supporters or as many as usual to come up here tonight, which may in turn help the police in that operation. OK, Peter, we'll leave it there. Thank you. The Knights' Andrew Johns almost switched to rugby a couple of years ago. Tonight he'll be out to torment the informed Bulldogs. Mate, I'll be uh, trying my best to, you know, contain him, but we, you know, we all can't concentrate on Joe. Danny Widler, National so 9 News. And Mark, that game around about 9.30 tonight. Joe is back to his best. Newcastle are back on top. Can the dogs stop the informed Knights? Knights Friday night football. Knights Bulldogs is... Well, the Knights continue to steamroll through teams in this early part of the new season. And last night they brought the Bulldogs crashing back to earth with a fantastic first 40 minutes up there in Newcastle. Hello, everybody. It's Super Saturday. Warren Smith along with Laurie Daly to take you through our one-hour pre-game show before the Warriors and the Tigers meet in Christchurch. And last year, Laurie, the Knights lost their first 13 games straight. This year they might just win. 13 straight. They may well do so, but it's great to see a rugby league side like the Newcastle Knights regain their enthusiasm for the game and their enjoyment. I thought they were terrific last night, as they have been in the last three week, uh, last three weekends. They're playing some terrific attacking football, and I'm sure that's the type of football that have got all the opponents worried in this year's competition. You mentioned the attacking football. Every time the Bulldogs gave them a chance last night, the Knights invariably finished it with a four-pointer and usually converted that into six with Andrew Johns slotting them from all parts of the field in the first half into the breeze as well. 34-6 was the score at the break. Well, they constructed a plan during the week and they worked it to perfection in that first half. Look, it was 34-6. The game was all over, but Andrew Johns, conductor, uh, Denny Badiris, I thought, around the middle of the park, come up with some smart options with the football. Just knows when to give it to Johns, knows when to take it himself and create options for the, the forwards getting over the advantage line. Look, they're the two best players in the, in the game in their positions, obviously, but they mean so much this new Castle team and their key playmakers. Well, it wasn't a, the Bulldogs' night, of course, as we uh, found out at full time, but early in the game, in just the third minute, they had what appeared to be a fairly tough call go against them. Tony Grimaldi ended up mm. with the football as it came loose. Uh, it could have been a try. It uh, certainly didn't seem to be a stripping penalty, put it that way. No, I thought they would have went to the video referee to have a look. I think David Siege has just lost the football here. There was a couple involved in the tackle. Uh, Stephen Clark made a decision that it was stolen. Um, and there was two men in the tackle, but I think when he watches the replay during the week, he'll realise it was a mistake. Yeah, I think the ball will probably come loose there as the tackle's completed. It should have been a, a scrum feed at the least to the Bulldogs. Yeah, so. e exactly right. And look, when you play the Newcastle Knights in that hostile environment, you need to get away to the best possible start, and I think that put the Bulldogs back on their heels a little bit. OK, now Milton Friday, what a start to the season he's had in 2006, and suddenly he's been spoken about as being a possible state of origin player, whether it's for Queensland or New South Wales is still up for debate, but after the game, Michael Hagen had this to say about his fullback. Um, Milton's been our players player for the last two weeks and there'd be a fair chance of getting a trifecta tonight on his performance, so I don't know if that's happened too often in our history, but uh, going very well and I think um, you know he's getting better with more football and a better understanding with our, our good players, so um, you know, very exciting to watch and I think he enjoyed himself at the same time. And he's beating defenders with incredible ease at times, isn't he? Well, he's an excitement machine. The Newcastle fans have taken him on board. and He's just got the ability to create 
when things aren't happening. He's just got that speed, and that's something as a fullback that you need. He support players improving. He said after the game that he's enjoying following Andrew Johns around the football field. Johns makes people a better player, but Milton Thiday is certainly making a name for himself. And they've got a lot of try scoring ability in their football time uh, team this season. They've used 18 players already and 13 have crossed the try line. Mm. So obviously they've got plenty of ability there. Five days doing it at fullback and well up front Josh Perry is uh, perhaps living up to the uh, potentially shown for some time. He never quite reached the heights that perhaps he should have but he's fit and firing and after the game Michael Hagan also had this to say about his front rower. Like a lot of people if you get the opportunity to play week to week you can you can find uh, some match fitness and find some form. And I thought, uh, you know, he's getting his leg speed and the way he carried the footballs, uh, you know, very much shades of what he's capable of doing. And I think uh, he and Craig Smith, you know, set the platform. And then I thought Adam Lula and Dan Toller carried on with, uh, with their contributions. So. It's amazing we're talking about this uh, after the game. They keep kicking off to his side of the field, putting themselves under pressure. A big man like that that really gets some momentum up, the last thing you'd be wanting to do is kick off to him. I thought they might have changed that, kicked to the other side of the field. But Josh Perry, barnstorming form last night, really took it upon himself to lead this Newcastle side, he along with Craig Smith. They were coming up against uh, an intimidation um, which was shown by the Bulldogs the previous week with O'Mealy, um, Mason, uh, really trying to intimidate the Tigers forwards. But the Newcastle front rowers weren't going to take a backward step. Craig Smith came out of retirement to help them last year. He's been just as effective as any other player in this Newcastle outfit. I think he's shown good leadership qualities and been a real leader for their young forwards. Yes, quite a story, Craig Smith, after, of course, uh, seemingly retired from the game. Now, Danny Badiris is also in that front row with Smith and Perry and continues to show why he is just flat out the best hooker in the game. Well, he just takes the right options and it's his ability to play 80 minutes of football he does a lot of defensive work and he never takes the wrong option. <laughs> Very rarely do you see Danny Badiris not take the right option and he's such a competitor that's the thing that I like about him. He's captain his country, he's captain his state and just plays with that amount of passion week in, week out. Mm. And it was able to take advantage of some fairly ordinary uh, Bulldogs goal line defence there. They just didn't seem to have their heads on last night. No, they didn't. I think the tactics were very good from Newcastle last night. Denny Badiris just didn't allow his forwards to get gang tackled in the middle of the park. They played down short sides a lot, so it couldn't allow the gang tackling. When they did go to the middle, they went to an edge straight away or they'd come from a long side, break it down and then continue on. So I thought the tactics that they come up with to play the Bulldogs was exceptional. Now there are many reasons why uh, Andrew Johns is the most complete player in the game, perhaps by a stretch as well, but one of them is certainly his goal kicking, which as I made mention of, especially into that breeze last night in the first half, was fantastic. Look, I, I can only remember back to say 1970 about footballs and Andrew Johns to me, I, I don't know whether he's the best footballer that's played the game, but in my time he's certainly the most complete player I've ever seen. Mm. He has got every box covered. You can tick every box with Andrew Johns. He's just a wonderful competitor. He shows how much he means to this Newcastle Knights outfit. And I think it'll be a fitting reward if he goes on and reaches this record. Yeah, cracked the 2,000 point mark, of course, with his uh, first kick at goal last night to reach that uh, milestone. And then he now needs 92 points only to crack Jason Taylor's record there. And we were thinking before the season kicked off, you thought round about maybe round 20 or so he'd get there. Well, the way he's going, he's averaging almost 18 points a game to begin the season. He's now got 53 points in three games. He might do it in another six or seven games. Well, if the team continues to play the style of football that they've shown over the past three weeks and rattle up scores, he's quite capable of doing it. Uh, I'm sure in the back of his mind, he wants to get that uh, record out of the road as quickly as possible because the main focus come the end of the season needs to be on the Newcastle Knights winning semi-final yeah. games. I'm sure leading into the semi-finals he doesn't want the focus on himself and, and breaking that record. OK, well let's hear from the losing side now and after the game Steve Folks lamented the fact that the team didn't bring the same attitude to the game that they had the week before against the West Tigers. You know we turned up ready for the game physically um, but we just didn't have our heads on. It was, it was like uh, you know, all the stuff we'd done through the week to plan for the game went out the window and we sort of started ad living and doing things that we, you know, we weren't, weren't uh, we didn't plan to do, so. Um, 
Yeah, so that that part of it is pretty disappointing. The fact that we, uh, you know, we put a performance like that in after such a good performance last week, it um, makes you wonder. Makes you wonder what uh, what's going on. It certainly does. It makes you wonder which team is the real Bulldogs. The team we saw against the Tigers at Telstra Stadium a week ago or the team we saw last night or are they somewhere in between? Maybe they're not as good at the moment, still without Sonny Bill Williams, as we thought maybe they were after last week. Oh, look, when Sonny Bill Williams comes back into this football side, he means as much to the Bulldogs as Andrew Dons does to the Newcastle Knights. Look... The Bulldogs, the key for me is their ball control and getting away to a good start. If they can do that, they can build pressure and they've got some ability there to rattle up points. But last night they didn't have things go their way. They lacked that intensity, I thought, uh, with their defensive line and also the options with the football. The key play for them, of course, is Brent Sherwin. Mm. When Sherwin has a good game, invariably the Bulldogs win. He did, of course, against the Tigers off the back of what the forwards were doing against West at Telstra Stadium. <laughs> Last year's Wooden Spooners Newcastle have been sensationally backed into Premiership favourites. The move comes after a dominant 24-point win over the Bulldogs to kick off Round 3 of the NRL. The Bulldogs headed to Newcastle full of confidence after a big win over the Tigers that left victims of an Andrew Johns-inspired onslaught this morning forced to assess the damage. We got beaten pretty convincingly last night, so... I, I think we're all maybe down a little bit mentally. I don't know why we should have turned up. It was a massive game and uh, against a great team, and you know, for some reason, we made silly errors and, and concentration things that we didn't make last week. Winger Matt Utah's night ended after just six minutes. He faces a month on the sidelines with a rib injury. Got folded and just fell the wrong way, and it's pretty awkward at the time. And just had three, three pops, and that was it. The Bulldogs with no answer to Newcastle's early dominance. The home side up by 28 at half time. You know, the way we finished the first half, the way we started the second half was a, a pretty good sign of you know, how the team's uh, attitude is to their football at the moment. Newcastle's amazing form turnaround continuing as Milton Thaday bagged a hat trick two years after his career appeared over after being dumped by the Waratahs. You know, there's still a little bit of uh, work that I can do. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I was pretty happy with, with the way I performed tonight. The three try hero saving plenty of praise for his captain. Put him down as try day, not try day. It's got a treble. I, I just listen for him to tell me uh, where to go, um, and that's, that's probably the only thing you can do. Um, yeah, you can't argue with that. Um, you know, just wherever he wants you to be, you can just make sure you're there. While the Knights' early season form has bookies installing them Premiership favourites, Hagen is refusing to get carried away. I don't think anyone would after three games, mate, to be honest. So, you know, we just want to get ourselves in a good position um, at the start and hopefully be good enough at the end. Ken with Sport next and some interesting news on Andrew Johns. He's enjoying a new lease of life and we'll tell you more soon. Some big news in rugby league. We can reveal that Andrew Johns, the game's biggest star, is poised to make his return to representative football. Johns is finalising his decision tonight, but it's almost certain he'll be back to play in the Anzac Test. At this year's NRL launch, Andrew Johns gave the distinct impression he was going to give representative football away. I'd really miss it, mate, but I look at, at Brad Fittler, what, what he done when he retired from rep footy. He galvanised the club. And when the players went away, um, he led from the front. Johns wanted to see how the Knights were travelling at the start of the year before making his mind up. And after three rounds, last year's Wooden Spooners are the competition hot favourites. And he's playing better than ever. Johns and his manager, John Ford, are met in secret with Australian coach Ricky Stewart in Newcastle today. And Stewart told Johns he wanted him back in the test side. And Johns gave Stewart an assurance that he'll be back. Ken is next with the latest on the rep future of Andrew Johns. Mark apparently is not going to be a long one. Joey explains all in an exclusive interview after the break. Andrew Johns has revealed that winning another premiership for Newcastle is the reason why he is quitting representative football. Johns will play one final test for Australia, but says that turning his back on state of origin was one of the toughest decisions of his career. For a player with nothing left to prove, Andrew Johns has now set himself one final goal. I'm going to miss it. I know I'm going to miss it. It's going to hurt, but it's a sacrifice I'm going to have to make if, if I want to make, win a premiership in Newcastle. and. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this decision not only for myself, but for the club up here and for my teammates. Last year, Johns' dramatic return to origin from a broken jaw turned the series, but it left him feeling drained. 
Now he wants to do what Brad Fittler did for the Roosters when he quit Origin. I've seen what he'd done to Brad Fittler when he retired from rep football. He really galvanised their club at the Roosters and, and lifted them during that period. So I'd like to see myself hopefully do the same. Before that, he's got some unfinished business. We all seen what the Kiwis done to us in the Tri-Series final. Um, you know, that really hurt me watching that. So, you know, I can't wait for that game to, to get out there and, and rip right in. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us for what should be a very busy NRL on Fox. Now along with our three special guests tonight, we'll try and tip some winners for you in this weekend's round four of the Telstra Premiership. And with me to do that, of course, is Laurie Daly. Loz will worry about the tips later in the show. Yep, great to be here again. How's your tipping been? It's been on fire. <laughs> Really? Yes. Does the Warthog know that? Slowly been putting out there. <laughs> now, we'll worry about the tips, as I said, later on in the show, but what was your reaction first off to the news today that Andrew Johns will play his last representative game for Australia, of course, in the May Test against New Zealand? I think it's great news. Joey you know, was going to retire at the end of last season from playing for Australia, but obviously suffered that knee problem, and it was a concern for him. He didn't realise or didn't think he'd be available for representative football. Obviously, he's come through the first three games with flying colours. He's playing some great football and I think it's great for the Australian Rugby League that he's available because obviously the crowd numbers will be strong and it's going to be a tough game against the Kiwis. The Kiwis won that Tri-Nation series last year. They proved to everyone that they will be a force and I think the uh, the one-off test match will be a fantastic one. Also with us will be Newcastle's flying fullback Milton Thiodeh whose form has pundits talking about him suddenly as a possible state of origin player this very year. We'll take another break now on the show but then Milton Thiodeh will fly in for a visit on NRL on Fox. Yes, Milton Thayde has been one of the real entertainers in the early part of the 2006 season and he's with us tonight on the show. Thanks for coming in, Milton. No worries. Good to be here. What a start to 2006. Could you dream it could have been this good? Uh, not, not, as, uh, not as well as this. Um, you, know, I, you know, after this pre-season, um, things have fitted in really well with, uh, with myself on and off the field. You must be living every footballer's dream, playing outside Andrew Johns. Yeah, well, you know, after coming down from Lismore watching him on TV. Um, it's always been a dream to run, run off uh, Andrew. Did you think he was that good? Um, watching him, you know, he, you'd, all, you, all, you, all you say to yourself is that he's a freak, um, but being there, you know, there's no, no words can explain uh, yeah. just the way he plays. And you seem to have just linked up with him very beautifully as far as running into holes and, and obviously other players in the team. Uh, it's a, just a natural fit, it seems, so far. It is. Um, yeah, you know, it's, um, I, I can't explain really um, how, how it feels, but um, yeah, just like I said before, it's a dream come true to play alongside him and uh, Danny and, and Matty Gids. It's been a bit of a surprise to see the Newcastle Knights start as well as they have. I know you finished the season pretty well in 2005, but it's been a surprise to us just how well the team's playing. I suppose a surprise to everybody but the players yourselves. Yeah, well, I think um, going into the pre-season training, um, you know, everybody were that hungry to get back into it straight away and I think uh, I wasn't here for the start of last year when when they had that downfall but um, um yeah no, there's just a lot of hunger in the in the side this year. Has much changed with the medical side and the off-field support staff? Uh, a lot's been made of the fact that the rehab system up there in Newcastle was pretty poor and all of a sudden with the injection of money from the West League Club off-field staff changed and you had new trainers and you had new medical and, and rehab people. Do you think that's made a huge difference to the start of 2006? Yeah, I think it has. Um, just so we've got, a, we've got another three or four more um, on board uh, in the coaching staff and, and um, you know, they're looking after treat, uh, injuries really well this year uh, because of those extra hands. Um, and yeah, it, it, it really showed it has showed uh, so far. And what about with yourself? You've picked up speed by the look of it and you've also picked up a few extra kilos. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Um, I, I did lose kilos uh, when I went back up north to Ballina, but um, I'm, I'm pretty much back to where I was at the Waratahs, yeah. you know, around the 82 kilo mark. Um, and I, I still don't, on myself, I, I still uh, don't think that I've reached my peak yet. No. Uh, and what about, you played rugby league as a junior? 
Was that all your, always your favourite sport? Because you did try the rugby union there at one stage. Yeah, I've, I've, I grew up playing league since I was six. Um, I played one game of rugby union and that was back in year 10, uh, back in 1994. Um, I played that one game and um, I didn't think, I didn't want to play it again because I thought there was too much running in it so I just didn't bother about it. How did you end up with rugby union? Um, it was a, a sports journalist up around the north coast there. Um, he got in contact with Bob Dwyer and uh, Gary Eller and um, he just mentioned to them uh, that just the form that I was in, I ended up getting player of the year or something up there in 2001 and just said to them if you know that they might be interested in in um, in me and uh, Gary Eller came up about a month after and uh, just talked to me, I had a yarn to me about all the different contracts that they give mm. out to young players and and um, it wasn't long after that, uh, it was around October 01 um, that I went down. Um, yeah. And what's been some of the hard things to adapt to coming back into rugby league, or was it harder the other way around when you went and played with the Waratahs, just learning the, you know, the little uh, efforts and what's required during a game? I think uh, it took me a full year pretty much to to uh, get to know the game properly. But every game uh, that I played, I, I always found out something new. Um, mm. But yeah, I think uh, the, but the hardest thing uh, for me was was moving there with my family and and. and and my daughter really Was that a real culture shock yeah. moving f from the bush to Sydney for the first time and you had a partner and a, and a young daughter as well and suddenly here you are in the big city? It, it was a big shock uh, for me because I never thought I'd live in Sydney just because you know growing up you see a lot of bad things on TV mm -hmm. uh, just for the crime and stuff and but um, it was a big shock for me to move from Lismore down to, down to Sydney here. Um, yeah, it took about a, I don't know, about a month to get, to get the hang of it. Now, your contract with the Waratahs terminated because of some issues you had with alcohol at the time. Did moving to Sydney, was that part of the whole scenario with that? It, was that did that exacerbate the problem you had? I think, um, I think the thing was that um, for me, I think the more money that I earned, uh, that's what pretty much got me in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, the money came along and then the more drinking um, happened. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, I did have a problem uh, with the drink, and um, you know I decided to sort that out. And, um, and yeah, I, I'm feeling heaps better now than than what I uh, did back then. And in a way, of course, that's how you ended up at the Newcastle Knights. You fell out of the the contract with the Waratahs, went back up to the North Coast, and and the uh, the Newcastle Knights found you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to get away from uh, you know from Sydney. Went back up there to get back into some work. Uh, you know, anything uh, in the schools or just mentoring kids up there um, and then uh, Neil Jamison um, a well-known uh, sports journal mm -hmm. he um, he came up and uh, done a story on me um, and he before he came up he mentioned to Hague's uh, well the nights that uh, he was doing a doing a piece on me and asked if they they'd be interested and um, he came up and we sat down for about four hours just in our kitchen just sitting there and having a good old yarn and then it wasn't long after he um, it was about a week after that. The Knights um, got in contact with us, and and it pretty much happened overnight, um, or over three days at least. Um, you know that I was down in Newcastle. So you've played football in Lismore and Ballina in different stints, but you grew up in Townsville, which is why you consider yourself to be a Queenslander. If it comes down a selection for Origin either this year or in in years future, which is a, a huge blow to the New South Wales selector sitting beside <laughs> you. He wants you to be a blue, but you're a maroon. Is that right? Yes, um, I'm a true true Queenslander. Um, digging through some uh, paper clippings, what my old girl cut out. Um, <laughs> I, f I, I was confused um, whether I didn't know whether it was a trial game or 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 a or a round, uh, one of the rounds up in Townsville, but I ended up finding out that it was the first round of the comp in uh, 1998. Um, I played that first round and then I went up to Darwin um, for a couple of years. So I was what about, we talk about your attacking ability, but there's been times in the games which I've watched and I've seen you put your body on the line and come up with some enormous, enormous efforts in defence. That must earn you the respect of the players. And is that something you've always prided yourself on doing? Because you're not the biggest guy running around? Um, <clears throat> well, growing up, uh, coming up through the grades, under 13s, 14s, uh, pretty much right up to till I started A grade, um, defence have been, has always been uh, one of my favourite um, parts of the game. Um, 
I, yeah, I haven't worked enough uh, on my defence um, since coming up up to uh, the NRL. Um, but yeah, I, I love tackling. Um, you know, when I get my timing in. Because yeah, you're quite fearless when people break through the line, aren't you? Oh, Especially I, when you're defending on the line and they're coming and they're charging. <laughs> I can remember a tackle on, I think it was Jason Rolls last year. Anything to stop them, I'll do anything. Yeah. Um, you know, no matter what it takes. Uh, if they're bigger than me, then you know, we'll see what happens. Your defence got a rap from Chris Walker, who isn't noted for his defence, but he played with you in a Queensland team back there when you were a teenager, under 15s? Under 15 schoolboys. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I heard a couple of players. Um, I don't know if it was high or not, but um, under 15s carnival, yeah. Um, I think I played against Chris a couple of times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, as far as your family's concerned up there in Townsville, was your dad Mick? A footballer as well. What sort of heritage is there as far as rugby league in the family? Uh, well, all of my brothers. I've got about five brothers. Uh, we've all, we all played up. Uh, all grew up playing rugby league. My dad was a boxer. He never. I think he only played a little bit of league. Um, but he he done pretty good in boxing uh, when he was about 17 or 18. He turned pro uh, back around when Tony Mundine was fighting. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's probably the only sport that he. Carried on. We talk about some of the big names of the Newcastle team, the Andrew Johnses and the Denny Badiris, but some of the younger players are doing a terrific job and were probably thrown in before their time last year, but they've certainly added to your depth this season. So if you've got an injury problem or injury concerns, you're quite comfortable in the fact knowing that a lot of these blokes can handle the job. Yeah, um, you know, our, our Premier League side's gone really well this year. Um, nearly half of the side have, has uh, had some uh, or has played a few games in the A grade um, but yeah you know they're just almost just as good as us mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah your Tolars you know, and your yeah, Riley Browns and, and all these players and uh, Jared Mullen who yeah. just signed on another couple of years he, he you know I think he, he's looking forward to the next few years well it's amazing the road you've taken to get to where you are now but living in Newcastle suits you down uh, down to the ground it, it would seem yeah, I'm, I'm loving it up there. You know, it's nice and uh, laid back. Uh, the beaches are beautiful up there. My family loves it. Um, so, yeah, just going along nice and easy. What about you get over the line a lot? Can we see a try celebration at some stage? <laughs> I don't know. That's what my partner always uh, asks me to do, you know. But I'm, I'm, You're I'm working trying, on I'm one of them, I try to moment. be serious. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep thinking about trying to do one, but... I just don't think of it at the time. Oh, There's some sure. parallels there with Anthony Mundine. His father was a boxer. Your dad was a boxer. Can you do a flip in the in the in goal? Can you, what's, what's your gymnastic ability? Oh, yeah, I think I need a long run up to the <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've been making plenty of long runs on the field for the Knights and scoring some tries. Yeah. Keep it going and good luck against the uh, the Warriors on Sunday. No worries. Thank you very much. Milton Thayde, one of our special guests in on the show tonight. Now, the season so far, uh, three rounds, is yeah. uh, three teams undefeated. Who's on top? The Cowboys and the Knights. The Knights are on the top. Knights. Absolutely. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, it's one of those seasons. Last Kendrick, year, yeah. it wasn't like uh, from go to woe, it was a tight competition. It was anybody's. I've got to say at the moment, that isn't the case. I think at the moment, Newcastle and North Queensland are lengths ahead. The rest have to catch up. It's a big scoreline, too, we've seen. I think that's just an indication. I think every team will get a touch up at some stage. The yeah. game these days, you get a bit of momentum. It's hard to stop it. I think every team, they'll have some big score Absolutely. lines run up Fetty, against just, them. Just a quick wrap. Milton Friday for the Newcastle Knights. Oh, three players, players in a row. Three tries last week. He's on fire. Congratulations. He's done well. <laughs> Mate, is there another team in the comp bar Newcastle? Sorry. You wrap Newcastle, you wrap Milton, Milton Thiday. Mate, we there come, are 14 we come other last teams last year yeah. and we now turn it around. I think it's a fantastic effort. Deserves a little something. Yeah, they reckon they've got, they got a great bloke on the board too. What's his name? He's Paul doing Arrigan, or something. Great things, team. <laughs> OK, on uh, Friday night, the Newcastle Knights took on the Bulldogs on the sideline. Good game. Very good game. Now, Matthew Johns doing a wonderful job there in the commentary. Was down on the... Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, mate. Was on the sideline there talking to his brother about his beard. Now, if you haven't heard the question, it was a good one, but the answer was outrageous. Have a look at this. Mate, uh, just on looking like Matt in the beard, please explain it to us. Oh, well, I promised my girlfriend that uh, as soon as I'm, I let, let myself down in bed, I'll shave it off. That's outrageous. Let's hear that again. Oh, well, I promised my girlfriend that uh, as soon as I'm, I let, let myself down in bed, I'll shave it off. <laughs> Mate. Now, let me just say, that is confirmed 
But the two Johns brothers are the most bizarre blokes I've ever met. You're on. What's doing? I tell you, the best thing was the comeback. Gus Gould said I saw her buying razors this morning. But, I mean, <laughs> Andrew Johns, I've got to say, a lot of the Newcastle supporters, they believe he's a saviour. If you look at the front of Rugby League Week this week, I think he's starting to believe it as well. I mean, get a close-up of that, guys. Andrew Johns, can we get a little bit closer? There we go. I mean, that is... That is the fall of Christianity. He looks like Jesus Christ here. That is terrible. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. He, he believes he looks French or something. He looks like a hermit. Um, he, can do, he can do no wrong at the moment. For the past couple of weeks, there's been lots of speculation about who is going to host Millionaire. Uh, and, uh, it's one of Channel Line's favourite shows. You're the man. Still but waiting for a call, Eddie. Just <laughs> any time, mate, if you want to ring you. But one bloke who thought he was in contention was Red Dragon. He would have seen him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he trimmed his hair. He, he trimmed his moustache. Lost about eight stone. He started uh, drinking Chardonnay, visiting Oxford Street. It's the different rich to the one that we know. But today, he's officially been ruled out of running. I'm not sure how he's feeling about this, but... <laughs> Take the news well, Reg. you, Fanny? That's me, Reg. <laughs> hey, Fanny, I've been drinking again. <laughs> oh, apparently, Sir Eddie doesn't think I'm mean and material. <laughs> oh, God, I wish I was Jamie Dury. <laughs> that guy's got such a great body. <laughs> now, Reg, what's happened the past three weeks? Uh, You've been a... on a bender. <laughs> Oh, Fatty. Guys, I've said some things. You guys have said some things. Will you just take me back? The old Reg Will we back. take Reg back? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's your answer, Reg. There's your answer, mate. Where are you going? Yeah! Who are you to get him, Maguire or something? You've got to take it outside, mate. You've got to take it outside, mate. Reggie's back. Uh, he's mm, probably not, not at his best tonight, but uh, he'll be back on the show pretty soon. Uh, no, we he's hope. back, mate. That's why we love yeah. him. The, the, the new Reg was poo. He's great. All right, Pretty now. Back. Well, <laughs> yeah, the new Reg poo, was, poo. was tragic. Andrew Johns has announced he will retire from rep footy, but not before he plays one more test against the Kiwis in May. Now, I want to see Andrew Johns play as much rep footy as possible, but something just doesn't sit right with me. It smells of a deal being done, especially when you consider the national coach, Ricky Stewart, and the player, Andrew Johns, share the same manager. Why does the manager have to broker a deal? You either want to play for Australia or you don't. It's time now for the big fat five and... First question, can we stop the Bulldogs fan violence? Paul Harrigan. Yes, we have to. Uh, I think what Vossi said is correct. I think stop the night games. First and foremost, let's get rid of the night games for the Bulldogs. I know it's only a small element and it may affect everyone else, but I think that's a way to go. I think it's a way to go. In my opinion, it's not just a dog's problem, not just an NRL problem. It's a problem which is synonymous with the southwest of Sydney. And it can be stopped, but firstly, people have to pick out the offenders. That's where it starts. Yep. No, I don't think it can be stopped. I don't know how you stop that kind of stuff. If people want to do it, they, they will do it, no matter what kind of jersey they're wearing. Um, there are measures that can control it, but I don't think you'll ever stop it. Well, we can't stop. The only people who can stop are the Bulldogs fans themselves. I mean, wake up for yourselves. It's a game of football. Go there, cheer on your team, but leave, you know, the opposing fans alone. I mean, just go home and enjoy the... Go out and enjoy the game, all right? Will... Question two. Will Mark Gaznier take the big money from rugby? Sorry, that. Will Mark Gaznier take the big money from rugby? I think, uh, look, I hope not. Uh, I, I think if, thanks for that answer, but uh, look, I think if the big money is offered to him, I think he'll take it. And uh, look, the NRL stance is that they don't want to get involved with this, but I think they have to. I think we've got to bring in some sanctions because most players that are looking to go over now think, if it doesn't work, I'll just come back to rugby league. I reckon if you leave our game to go to Union, you're not, well, well, you can't come back. You can't come back and represent Australia if you leave our game. I think you've got to, you've got to get tough. Yeah, look. Yeah. <coughs> I'll tell you, probably speaking, Speaking more from the heart than the head, I, I think 
I've got a feeling that the last moment he's going to stay. I really, I think okay. he will for a lot of the game. All right. Yeah, I think that he'll be the kind of person who believes there's a lot more to achieve in rugby league and he'll stick around for a while. I hope he doesn't, but he'd be mad not to. Seven, eight hundred thousand to go to rugby union and make about five tackles a year. Good money, I reckon. Um, should Joey be allowed to pick and choose? Meaning? Well, rep, 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 rep football. I mean, if Joey gets picked for the Australian test coming up soon and he plays in it, well, mate, good luck to him. If after that he decides that he wants to retire from representative football, what's the problem? There's no picking and choosing there. He's right. Yeah, he's already he's announced that he's not going to play State of Origin. I think through his career he's earned the right to say, look, I'm not going to play State of Origin and put his hand up and have a farewell of the Anzac Day test. I think it's a... I don't know whether it's a one-off or not, but I think he's heard that right. No bigger rap on Andrew Johnson than myself, but no, I don't think he should be allowed to play the Test match and not play Origin. You're either playing representative football or you're not. Well, I think there's a problem with the calendar as far as that Test match is concerned. It always comes before State of Origin. Uh, Andrew has said he doesn't want to play State of Origin, but he's made himself available for the Test. Um, certainly, if it was after the State of Origin, I wouldn't be picking Andrew Johns, but now I certainly would. He is still the best halfback and available. You've got to pick him. Um, speaking of... Who will be the Blues halfback? Who will be the number seven in the Sky Blue, Chief? Well, if Joey's not going to be there, mate, it's, look, it's impossible. We've got a city country match to go yet. Yeah, we've got a lot of form in between now when the origin's picked. You know, there's there's Kamali, there's Orford, there's there's um, Gower, there's a lot. Mate, I can't. I wouldn't have a clue. We've got to wait for some form. Yeah, I, I think it'll be Gower. I think the way he started the season, he's a great competitor. Right. He suits state of origin, Gower. Craig Gower. Craig Gower. I think Matt Orford. Uh, he's a slow start at Manly, but we know he's a great player. He's been a great player down at Melbourne. I think he deserves a run. He's pretty tough. He's got all the skills and can kick goals. Matt Orford for me. And the last question. Should the girls hand back their 4 by 400 metre gold medal? Oh, OK. After Good the girls. controversy. Mate, they've done nothing wrong. They've they done their best. They ran their race. And through a technicality, they've been given a goal. Why would you give it back? That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny one. I mean, it was a bit of a, uh, it was a, bit of a shallow victory. But, I mean, what the hell? Keep the goal. Sell it on eBay. <laughs> Oh, look, I know rules are rules, but rules operate best when there's some discretion and some common sense. Uh, running from the lane three instead of lane two, it didn't make up 12 or 13 metres. No. I couldn't keep the gold medal under those circumstances. No, I reckon those girls will probably... It, it was a shallow victory and they might feel a bit differently in 10 years' time. The fact they know they didn't win the race, but they got Come the gold on. anyway. You but I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't hand it back. Thanks, boys. Now, Joey Johns, he's been in the papers all week. He's not going to play Origin. Is he any chance at the Tri-Series at the end of the year? Look, I'm sure Ricky Stewart would love to see him play Tri-Series. Whether he can get away with that's another thing. The other question everybody's asking is, is this the beginning of the end for Joey Johns? And we asked him that this week. Oh, not, not really. The way I feel at the moment, the body feels sensational. So, you know, I've always sort of said, I've got a three-year contract, so probably mid-next year in June... Well, a bit early in May, June, I'll, I'll sort of make a decision to the club and we'll go from there. But, um, you know, I'd, I made a decision yesterday and I was running around training like an 18, 20 year old. So hopefully it can um, extend through for the rest of the season. Now, Andrew John's situation. Let's move on to one of the big stories in rugby league at the moment. Andrew Johns has declared himself available for the May 5 test against the Kiwis. He is unavailable for State of Origin football. football. Should he be allowed to do that? Now, this is a bit of a heart and head battle for me. My heart says I want Andrew Johns to play rep footy every game possible. But should we then let, say, Shane Webke play in this one-off test in Brisbane? I mean, he's retired from Origin footy. Yeah. I just don't like the principle, and I will let you start, Matty, because he is your brother, of a player being able to put a test into his schedule because it fits in with his club commitments. Do you think... Now, I think Shane Wickley is an absolutely fantastic player and been a great ambassador for the game. Is, An is Andrew Johnson and Shane Wickley on the same Playing. level? Do you, would you put them in the same? I think players of the, of the calibre of Andrew Johns and possibly one more in the game, Darren Lockyer, earn the right to say, do you know what? My body is starting... I'm getting past 30. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wave the flag as far as State of Origin is concerned. But you know what? I would love the chance to play one more test for Australia. And boys, let's not forget this. We whinge and whine that in rugby league we've got an imbalance. We put sure. State of Origin here and we put international football mm. there. Well, here's a player saying, you know what? I want to play one more test for my country. And, and, and do you know what? And do you think it's a good thing, boys, yeah. to just say this for the game, that a player says, this is going to be my last chance. 
uh, to play for Australia. And here's your chance to come out and watch him in the last test. Make it a celebration. Even Brian McLennan said it's going to be great for well, the Well, let game. me just pick up the hard line here. I think that we bent the rules for Andrew Johns last year and it came back to burn us. He was allowed to stay over in England, having finished his commitments with Warrington. He came back a week into the training camp for that test against New Zealand. He came back by Andrew's high standards out of shape and played in the test. Now, I see we made an exception there and it backfired. Well, I will say, on the England thing, again, like, it, like you make a point there, Vossi. No, he came back, he'd gone through an Origin series, mm. had a big run to the end of the year with the Knights, mm. went over to Warrington and it was knocked around a little bit when he got yep. back. But I still maintain it was good for the game over in England. It was good for yeah, the game I, over I, there. Absolutely. That's I, a I different think, issue there. I just different think issue. he has... I, I really believe, boys, he has he, earned, earned the, the right, right okay. to do this. Very quickly on this Definitely. one, TK, should he be allowed to play Test and not Origin this year? Yes I want to see Joey play every day of the week, all right? Okay. So I'm happy for him to play the Test. Just quickly, don't say we're not going to select Mark Gasner if he goes to Rugby Union, mm. all right? Because we've got to blood someone else in the centres. Why? why? Why do we have to blood... Don't we well, have to blood again, a half well, that, Again, that's another issue. <laughs> so very quickly, are you happy for Andrew Johns to play in the test and not play Origin, yes yeah, or no? Yes. Okay, Definitely. there you have it. After the break, we're going to talk about uh, Mark Gaznia, his situation. Mm. Do we put up some sort of fighting fund to keep him in rugby league? <laughs> Plenty believe we should. A telethon? We'll have that. <laughs> oh, a telethon <laughs> from great. the BMG. Yeah, hi, uh, how much do you want to donate for Mark Gaznia? <laughs> uh, 20 bucks? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, so we've good. got more of that sort of stuff. <laughs> on the Sunday, roast our first show for the year. Stay with us here on Channel 9. Hines, <laughs> Kosa. Oh! the biggest hit of the season so far. And it's Mark Gramble too that comes up with that hit. That is a sensation. Look at this. He nearly puts him back to Wollongong. Oh. Oh. That is a massive body blow for Craig Field. Oh. Welcome back to the Sunday race. Some classic commentary from uh, this man, Terry Kennedy. There was that, that was uh, 97, wasn't it? 1997, Brookie. I feel sorry for Craig Field mm. there because he put the arms up for the pass mm. a bit high. Mm. He was, his ribs were more exposed than Paris Hilton. <laughs> All right. uh, <laughs> and he ended up on his back. But uh, look, yes. To his credit, yes. to his credit, mm. he got up, he played mm. on. He was a tough character. He did two Craig years Hill. as a crash test dummy after that. <laughs> <laughs> he had a bit of a quit on the side, you know, bringing all the ads. He's tough. He was tough. Thanks for joining us. Sunday footy show time. Thanks, Andrew Voss. A great uh, rendition today of his fantastic show there. Now, today on the show, we're going to have a look at what's happened so far. We're halfway through round four. A couple of interesting results. Uh, Peter Sterling joins us later down in Wollongong. Of course, the Dragons taking on the Broncos, and he's got a special guest in Matthew Head. Tim Gilbert with Around the Grounds, catching up with all of uh, what's happening. Uh, and also, the panel joins us. Phil Gould, Paul Harrigan Fair and Jimmy Smith. Welcome, Fair boys. Yeah, you still? Now, Chief, you got some interesting news yeah, on Newcastle today. Yeah, got some today. interesting news straight off the head there. Joey Johns won't play today oh. against the Warriors. Um, good opportunity, though, for Jared Mullen. Uh, it's exciting because Jared Mullen and Kurt Gidley are a halves combination for the future, so they'll be up there today. He was on his way to Sydney for a Premier League game, yeah. Jared, so they pulled him off the, the bus. And what is the problem him. with Joey? What happened to Joey during the week? He was doing some weights, uh, strained the neck uh, muscle, and during training again later on the week, mm. hurt it again. So nothing too serious, nothing to do with the injury he had before, which... Uh, Pull him out of the year a bit early. So Joey's out, everything's okay though, right. he'll be back for next week. So who's playing halfback? Uh, Mullen Jared will Mullen will play, play halfback and Kirk Geely will play 5-8. Okay. Now it's a long way from Queensland or playing for Australia or even playing for Newcastle for that matter, but Robbie O'Davis is back playing football. Now the first touch of the ball that Rob had for the Macquarie Scorpions led to a try, still looks fit enough to play in the top grade. This pass was an absolute beauty. The Scorpions upsetting the highly favoured West Newcastle to score 50 points to 14. So Robbie O back playing football, can't wait for a few of those dancers in the post to post try celebrations. This is the Sunday footy show that was around the grounds. We're back after the break. There were also calls that Andrew Johns shouldn't be considered for the Anzac Test match after uh, Joey decided he would limit his representative football to Test matches, opting out of this year's State of Origin series. Uh, That's I, nonsense. I think with a guy like Andrew Johns, he's so good, 
He's done do whatever stuff. you want. Exactly. Do he's whatever earned, you want. He's earned the right to do whatever exactly. he wants. If he doesn't want to play Origin, he can play Test. Joey, you can do whatever you want. Agree. He plays one Test. He wants to play one off Test mm-hmm. so the crowd can go and yep. farewell. Maybe the greatest. Well, exactly like, right. John, John, while you were not looking yesterday, the uh, Warriors, which is the pretty lowly ranked team from New Zealand, yep. played against Newcastle, who hadn't had a loss. To eight o'clock in the morning of the match. Oh, Andrew happened. John says he can't play. And the real test was, is Newcastle capable of winning without Andrew Johns? And the short answer is no. no. It would appear not. Now, like pizza without pepperoni, like Abbott without Costello, like South Sydney without controversy, the Knights just aren't the same without Andrew Johns. We know this because they keep proving the theory over and over again. And they made a lot of mistakes. A heap of mistake the Newcastle side, but the Warriors, they must be very, very happy flying over from New Zealand and getting to the game and saying, hello, Andrew Johns is not playing. That is certainly going to go a long way in helping the win the game. The big thing about it, Newcastle, they were hit on the scoreboard for a while. They let themselves down. Their key players, some of their senior players, made a heap of mistakes that we probably won't see for the rest of the season. So that's how footy goes. I thought the Warriors, though, they, they gritted it out too. They had to get a win. They, they were desperate, desperate for their fans back home and themselves about winning some football games this year. Did you have a bet when you heard Joey wasn't playing or no. before it became news? <laughs> Did you know? No, I didn't. You I went on the inside? On tips, yeah. No inside no information inside, for no, you? No, but Newcastle were travelling OK early. They yeah. certainly challenged uh, the Warriors physically, and I thought they were handling that type of game. But I thought their kicking game was very, very ordinary. The, the, the charge downs, you know, but Georgie Carmelon, I thought he was dangerous down that left edge a couple of times. So they really sort of hung in there and they wanted to start the game in a positive manner because I, I'm sure they get sick and reading about it and hearing about how they, they can't win without Andrew John. So it would have been a major focus for them to start the game well. I think you did dead right there, mate. I, I think as a player at Newcastle and even a fan, you'd have to say, when are we going to win without him? Mm. The, the pressure must be on those players all the time, the Kirk Idleys, but it's probably the way they play a different style of footy. You know, Badiris tried to get him on the front foot for his good runs out of dummy half. That Steve Simpson was great again, mm. but the Warriors, they just, they just held in there. Now, Steve Price, he's the king of the charge down, we know that, but sometimes it can work for you and sometimes against you. It's a bit of a, a lucky dip. We see scored tries in the past of charge downs just like this one. He was beaten to the punch there by Milton Thiaday. It's a bit of a lottery though. Yeah, it is a lottery, but it came off from this. So look, they just couldn't build any pressure and they couldn't get any field position out of their kicking game. Newcastle, I think that really encouraged the, the Warriors to stay in the contest because yeah. they were getting tired at some stages, but they just kept turning the ball over. And whenever yeah. you turn it over in good field position or the, the, uh, the fullback can get it on the full with the wingers and then they're carrying the ball back on 20-metre carries, it just gives a good start to their set of six. So that's an area that they have to improve. And the other thing about it is that Andrew Johns, when he plays, does the majority of kicking, so no-one else gets an opportunity to mm. do the kicking game. Yeah. So, that, you know, that's one of the reasons why they do struggle when he's not there. Now, the Warriors went from two points down to ten points in front in the space of two minutes. It happened either side of half-time, but two minutes it was, and the Kiwi outfit was never headed. That's concentration. Yeah. I mean, when you've got a set start, 70 seconds or 50 seconds to go before the break, and you get found for numbers, and you don't show that scramble defence and that attitude to make the tackle, surely something's wrong. The other key thing with the Warriors, their their big men with footwork really cause the Knights forward some problems and their offloading skills come to the fore. That's just a concentration thing by Newcastle just before the break and two minutes after the break. That's when you've got to be defensively at your best. Now you knew it wasn't going to be the Knights day when Danny Badiris uh, Mm. makes this mistake that led to a try. A simple put down from dummy half and you thought, well, if Danny's making mistakes then it's not going to be their afternoon. I, I, I felt sorry for him and you know, he's like we know, that the, the best number nine in the game, and for him to come up with a mistake like that, which then leads the Warriors in an opportunity to score their tries, you, you feel for them. Mm. Like he does a hundred, well, say a hundred good things, and just that one little thing, and that's then that's what we remember. We don't remember the amount of tackles he made, the amount of runs out of dummy half he's made. It just goes focuses back to that. But other than that, you know, like I said, there are other players in that side too that made some glaring mistakes. Well, the Knights themselves had some late chances and it wasn't a big call obviously to say that if Joey had been on the field, what if? He might have got somebody over here and got them uh, back into the game and uh, close, closer than what they went. Well, I think what happens when Joey plays, he plays it same as Benji Marshall. They play at a fast tempo and the other players have got trust in their ability. So when they go to the line, people tend to push up with them and run into holes. Whereas when other players, or they're not there, and other players get the opportunity of being the ball yeah. player, 
the players haven't got the confidence to run into those holes. Mm. And I just think that just comes obviously with the, the knack of being gifted and the knack of having trust in your, in your ball player. And when those two players don't play for their clubs, all that type of the game and their offence goes out of whack, goes out of sync. We'll see what happens if he uh, misses too many more games, of course, in the uh, well weeks or months to come. When the game was making legends, you were there. Dreaming, hoping, screaming, you were there. It's been nearly a hundred years. Of grunt, sweat and tears But when next week comes around You'll still be there Hello, wow. boys. Hey, How, are you, How are you? You'll notice there's a divide here, and there is a division in the ranks in this uh, panel at the moment because it's a disgrace what happened Absolutely. last weekend. There was a rort pulled in the Newcastle Warriors game. That's it. Apparently, some people knew that Andrew Johns wasn't playing. Everyone in Latston of the Warriors backed them to win millions. Now, on this panel, we've got a Newcastle board member and the brother of Andrew Johns. <laughs> and they left us out, Pete. They I left us out of the rort. We love it, Pat. They the left us team. out. In fact, look. Ray Warren was mentioned in the article as well. I tried to ring him today to see what flight he was on town for yeah. tomorrow. He's actually in the Caribbean, flew on his is. Learjet to be on his own private yacht. How much did you like win? Well, 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 I'll say this, Fat. I mean, seriously, we, we didn't have a bet on. We just don't. We don't bet on football games. You're not allowed to do that. But I mean, if, if Andrew pulls out this week, my butler will let you know. Put it that way. Yeah. You're a new butler, son. But hey, Andrew, is he playing this now, week? Now look, he went down this week. But look, the concern was with his disc. He had that. Uh, a few uh, years ago, a disc problem yeah. that nearly ruled him out of the game. He went down, I think today, had scans, saw Dr. John Yeo, I think sort of Yeo, and uh, he said that... Uh, Close. He said that uh, Andrew's nearly. OK, the discs are OK, uh, it's a muscular problem, if it loosens up, he will play this week. And train well on Wednesday, watch him train on Wednesday, he's looking good, he'll be right to so, play. So, uh, look, as far as I'm concerned, Andrew will play, you can put the house on it. Yeah. So to speak. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so to boys speak, yeah. grudge All week you've been filthy on oh, that we, one. We Ken don't like being, being left out of a rort, which, which it was. The uh, Dragons take on the Knights, Matt. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, the, uh, I think today the uh, bookmakers had suspended betting, not surprisingly, wondering what Andrew Johns is going to do. Look, he's 80% there. Look, if Andrew Johns plays, I think the Knights are the best team in the Premiership and going for the Knights. And just quickly, Matty Gids plays his 200th game. Well done, Matt. Well done, Matt. <laughs> And here's the putter's proof. He's on the bus. A new look Andrew Johns set to play tomorrow. Well, after 24 hours of drama, Andrew Johns will play against St George Illawarra tomorrow night. Official betting on the match only resumed after the Newcastle captain passed a fitness test on his neck at training this morning. It's the sight Knights fans and punters were craving. Andrew Johns on the team bus, bound for a date with the Dragons. The skipper looking relaxed after passing his fitness test. But a hot reception awaits in Wollongong. Oh, I guess he gets targeted every week, um, given where he defends in the line. And I would expect that uh, you know, they'll try and find him a bit tomorrow night, for sure. Until scans in Sydney yesterday, real fears in the Johns camp that he'd suffered a recurrence of his career-threatening neck injury from 2003. Hagen denies his side's confidence has taken a battering from all the talk that they can't win without Johns. Betting agencies refusing to do business on the game until confirmation the champion number seven would play. As far as me and the team's concerned, that's just something we've got to deal with and, and try and work around. But um, you know, obviously the, the people that are having a punt, they're the ones that are, are more concerned about it probably than we are. In a massive boost for the Knights, Andrew Johns has been declared fit to tackle the Dragons tomorrow night. Johns left for Wollongong with teammates this afternoon after training behind closed doors. Betting has now resumed on the match after being suspended because of doubts over his neck injury.